Party Star. Starting in YouTube Live. And Sonoff, any traffic going home? No, it was pretty quiet. That's nice. We're just waiting. Morning, to Sally. Sally lives around the corner. Yeah, all I have to do is avoid the horse and buggies up here, Jerry. <laughs> you know, I they, have they, terrible they, traffic. They, they, they just started paving roads here in the, last, in the last 10 years. Yeah, they're heating up oil and mixing it with dirt. <laughs> The, uh, the town of Pound Ridge only started paving their roads in the late 80s, early 90s. Okay. Good evening. Uh, we're ready to start, are we? One second. Okay, we're ready. Okay, good evening. Uh, welcome to the September 27, 2021. Village of Mamaroneck Board of Trustees work session. I need a motion to open the work session. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, thank you. Uh, I think the first, pardon me, the first matter that we're going to go with the executive session. There are one, two, three, four, five items uh, that will go on the executive session. I'm going to make the motion uh, and read all five. So I make a motion that we enter into executive session for a police department personnel matter. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session pursuant to 105.1F of the New York State Public Officers Law. Uh, I also make a motion for appointments to Planning Board, HCZMC, Traffic Commission, and Flood Mitigation Advisory Commission. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session pursuant to 105.1F. Uh, C. Uh, appointments to Climate Smart Task Force. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session pursuant to 1051F of New York State Public Offices Law. Uh, D. Uh, Fed, Fedina versus HCZMC and the Village of Mamari. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session pursuant to 1051D of the New York State Public Officers Law as it relates to proposed pending and current litigation. And the next one is Westchester Joint Waterworks Department of Justice EPA matter. It is anticipated that a motion will be entered, will be offered to enter into executive session pursuant to 1051D of the New York State Public Officers Law as it relates to matters of proposed pending or current litigation. So I am making those motions. I need a second. Second. Mr. Fusco, please call the roll call. Trustees, Wentra? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay, I will uh, meet you all uh, in executive session. The first item we're going to do in executive session is the police matter so that we could get uh, the chief out of the room. <laughs> Doesn't sound very nice. Okay. <laughs> if I could get out, I'd get out.
Hey, Mark, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm all right. <laughs> Sorry. All right. I thought we were, the, for some reason, my screen's only showing you. It's not even showing me. Oh, and, really? Yeah. You can see. Um, it's just a quick on view or, uh, the upper right hand corner. I've had that problem, Kelly, and there is no way of, I, the, I don't have the view to change it sometimes. It's idiosyncratic and it only happens in village meetings. Mm. Oh gosh. I, it's frustrating, right? Because I didn't change anything. Oh, all of a sudden. Got it? Here we are. All, oh, it was the shared, it was the uh, executive session banner. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So, am I on? Yes. Okay, good evening. <laughs> Uh, we are coming out of executive session. In executive session, uh, there were three votes taken. The first vote was a vote to hire Wright Osterman uh, to represent uh, the village and, and the HCZMC in the uh, Fedna versus uh, HCZMC in the village of Marinick lawsuit. That was a five to zero vote. And then there was another motion. Uh, to hire Bob Spolzino's firm uh, to represent the village as needed in uh, that uh, litigation. And that failed uh, by a vote of three to two. Uh, Kelly and I voted positively, uh, and uh, there were three negative votes. And then uh, the next vote was uh, to hire uh, Bob Spolzino's firm, uh, Mr. Ed Smith, uh, represent the Westchester Village in a matter of Westchester Joint Waterworks Department of Justice EPA matter. That passed uh, by a vote of three to two. Myself, uh, Kelly, and Nora uh, voting in favor. So those were the votes that were taken in uh, executive session that are now being reported out to the public. Okay, thank you. Uh, so thank you, Wolfie, for preparing the list. The Tom, Tom, yeah. I'm sorry, if you don't mind, if I can just clarify that in the um, EPA matter that we are sharing Mr. Spolzino's firm with the town of Mamaroneck. Yes, we are sharing costs with the town of Mamaroneck. So it'll be a 50% ours, 50% TOM. Uh, okay. We're going to go on to the regular agenda. We're going to get through as much as we can. We have uh, stuff that has to get uh, on for tonight. So it's now 6 o'clock, uh, 6.15. We'll go to 7.15 uh, and then do the stuff that has to go on for tonight. And then we'll break at 6.45 to give, uh, 7.45, I'm sorry, to give folks a chance to recoup before the regular meeting. Uh, hey. Item 1A, old business. May, may or may I precisely there? Uh, there's, there's item. P, which was the adoption of the agenda, which, which is one we've, we've been, we, we said at some time we'll pick up soon so that we can organize, at least adopt the agenda and at that point identify if something is missing. For example, I think there's something that is in the regular session that should be discussed quickly in a, in a work session because it's, because it's our practice and because otherwise it may need to be tabled or something. And well, that's one of the arguments to have uh, the adoption of the agenda, which is that I think that the, the um, practice, uh, every, every board that I, and that I they know about, and I think should be, should be as easy as putting it as the third order in business after opening the meeting and roll call is adoption of the agenda that allows that 
brief uh, identification of what is missing and what got off of because that's so anyway if you could do if you could do that first i would appreciate it. well there's a lot of things that are working waiting a long time uh a long time more than that but i will move to that based upon your request but uh you know it's, it's once again jump in the line uh adoption of agenda 1p let's do that very quickly Um, I'd like to make a motion, I guess, to um, uh, adopt uh, or to discuss in order of priority um, uh, the following. Um, uh, those items that are on the agenda for uh, the work session that are on the agenda for the regular meeting. Um, uh, the one uh, uh, um, uh, Q. Um, Wait up! Wait, no, you're you're oh, getting ahead. No, 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 no! Stop! Stop! You're getting ahead of the. What am I getting ahead of, sir? Because we're we're on one. We're doing one thing at a time. You're jumping to another agenda item. We're on an agenda item that Victor picked out. I'm sorry. I apologize. Let's go through this. Go ahead, Mayor. Say it again. Go ahead, Mayor, if you wanted to just- No, I'm just... asking you, Victor, what are the changes? Okay, it's very simple. Uh, the order of business in our, in our uh, um, procedures uh, has order of business, call to order, roll call, and then adoption of the agenda is my proposal. And then everything continues. So it's just to insert after roll call, adoption of the agenda so that at this stage, we, we just adopt the agenda. We know what we're going to go through. Uh, we can prioritize. You, you are you are the chair. Okay, no, no, no. Let me just ask quickly. So you mean at the regular meeting? It, it is actually for both because we have the 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 uh, the uh, the way the our procedures are structured has order of business for both the same. And mm -hmm. minutes, everything is the same. We, we would only need to insert. Adoption of the agenda after roll call. That's all I'm asking for. Yeah, I, I don't see. We, we never do roll call. Hey, um, can can I just ask that? I don't think this is actually right to be adopted tonight and moved forward. The backup that I'm looking at has several um, mistakes in it. I think it should be changed to address the fact that we're meeting in Zoom. We should have procedures for that. It speaks to committees and imposes additional requirements on committees for minutes that I think we need to think about. Um, and I just don't think this is something that we can take up tonight and, and adopt tonight and start following tonight. I think it requires a little more discussion. Um, and so putting it at, right and discussing it now, I, I think if we take this up, we could use the rest of our work session. I, I have some issues that I would with with the with the backup on this, the, the, I mean the backup. It, it's it's only our our our, our current rules. Right. So if you want to amend your rules in other areas, you're welcome to bring it bring it on. Uh, Kelly, Trustee Wick, Winstrup, whenever you think. But at this point, uh, for for over a year, I've been asking that we have the same procedures that any board, private, public, international, national, even 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 um you know. NGOs that have adoption of the agenda. It's, it's just a basic procedure of a democratic uh, you know, well, I, I, arrangement I, I, that, that it should be inserted so that we don't have, it really will facilitate that something that's not missing should be brought in or priorities uh, could be flipped. And that's where I think you, you, um, the mayor as chair can, can lead and, and, uh, and, and trustees will have a chance to say, Maybe this is also for regular session or something like that. It would be expedited, but but I think it it's that's the single uh, a single line on the on, on our procedures will do that organization that I think it's vital. Well, in that case, I don't think what you're asking for is included in the backup, and so I'm not sure well, I'm clear on what you're asking. It is, it is and I'll just then make, make a motion to move well, that in order of business. After roll call, 
we include adoption of the agenda. That's my motion. But to Kelly's point, where is it on the back? You're, 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 you're calling an audible now. I understand that. Well, I've been talking about this, and I, it was in my memo explaining it. And, and it's, you know, what, what, what I've been talking about this for a while. No, Victor, honestly, I didn't know that that was what you were talking about. I'm not against it, but honestly, I didn't know that. Uh, and just as a point of uh, fact, I, I've served on the town of Mamaroneck Board, I've served on the Westchester General Waterworks Board, and none of them do this. I'm not saying we shouldn't do this, but to say that everybody else does it, I, I, that has not been my experience. I have a motion. I, 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 can look, I can let me look at those rules anyway, but I, I have a motion on the floor. I, I'll second it so we can go through this. Fine. I call a motion. Trustees Winship? No, because I don't understand what we're voting on. Matches? Yes. Lucas? Yeah. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? There was no backup to this. Uh, as Kelly said, I don't understand what I'm voting first, and I don't understand what, what, what the, the problem that was solved by this. So I'm going to vote no. But I would have, you know, probably have voted yes had this not had there been some homework done on this. So okay, there you have. That's done. That starts at the next meeting, not this one. I'm not sure why you would start at the next meeting. Because we had no opportunity to prepare, Dan. Well, we have the agendas in front of us. Okay. Item 1A. Uh, is Westchester County. I would like to make a motion then. The motion like is out of order, Dan. We, 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 we have the agenda before us. <laughs> is this what it's going to be? that we're only going to deal with the items that three members of this board want to deal with and no. we're not going to go through i mean there's been stuff that's been waiting on here like years literally years and you know what have we done in the interim you know we, we passed laws to uh you know have referendums and stuff like that that doesn't really help people and there's all this stuff on this agenda there are lots of things on the agenda. Yeah, so why don't we just start going through it? And, and, and you jumping around, picking your things, which is what this is all about. Uh, not, it's picking your I'm things. I'm trying to pick things that are are very time sensitive and more so than others. And I think that- Based upon, based upon your view. I understand. And it's, it's my prerogative to make a motion to that. Somebody can second it or not, and we can go forward or not and do it another way. This is, this is a recipe for chaos. This isn't a recipe for running a meeting. Well, Tom, I, I would be careful because you pick and choose a lot as you're running the meeting. So don't, you know, don't well, accuse. Uh, don't I'm accuse more, Nora, that, that is my prerogative. I'm, I'm running the meeting. Oh, well, then, but I'm just saying what you're accusing Dan of is something that you do. So I think- Nora, Nora, I was elected to do Let's that. Let's have a friendlier conversation. Nora, I was elected to do that. I don't think you were elected, I was elected to, to run, run the agenda. Meeting. Okay. Uh, the, the problem here is you have a bunch of people you know, who, who want to have a committee mayor. And that's not how it works. I don't know that I understand what you say by a committee mayor. We have, it, we have many things on the agenda. All are important. Not getting to them. And let's schedule another work session so we can we'll right so I Again, I would like to make a motion uh, to do the following. To take up one in the following order. Um, one Q. Two, uh, two C. Um, this is insane. This is I cannot believe this. this is insane. <laughs> Let me just clarify. This is different from what. I, yeah. I mean, this is different. But the adoption of the agenda was you adopt the agenda, you move forward. This is different from Mr. Is suggesting. Different. That's what I'm going to clarify. I made Please continue, Dan. I didn't want to interrupt further. Yeah. Make your motion. I get it out. I, I stopped at 1C, um, uh, 1J, 
um, 6G. Uh, well, I'm sorry, um, sorry, 1G, um, 1F, and 1B in that order. Motion, is there a second? All right, hearing no second, we're going on to the regular agenda. Item 1A, Westchester County Project to Resurface Mamaroneck Avenue, County Road 8, inclusion of complete streets concept. Uh, my understanding is this was discussed at the last Board of Trustees meeting, uh, work session, and there were a lot of uh, issues brought up with this. Uh, does the board still wish to discuss this? I think we were waiting for two things. We were waiting for an answer as to whether or not what the county's deadline for making any changes is, because if we have to make changes, you know, in three weeks, it may not be an option. Or, and B, input from our traffic consultant. Kelly, we'd ask Kelly to get in touch with Shannon Purdy, which she did. I'm happy to get in touch with the county through Catherine to find out what the drop dead deadline is. I think we all think all the general consensus was it was a good idea. We needed advice from the traffic consultant and we needed to understand what the drop dead deadline is to make any change that we might want to affect. Is that fair? That is fair. And Shannon did provide a, a, a lot of information for us. But suggest but the, we get in touch with the with the with the with Matt, Matt Carmody. Carmody. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I did speak I with Mr. Carmody. There, there was one question that I asked that I asked uh, that Sharon did not answer and that uh, I asked Dan to ask uh, Carmody and I have not heard an answer to that either, which was uh, whether a four-way stop light with the walk signs was considered and evaluated. So and we, do we know what the deadline for any change would be? Well, as far as the signals, those are under our control. So there's no timeline as to what we could or would do with the signals. Uh, the roadway is, is a different matter. Is, is that the question you're asking, Nora? No, my question is any changes that we make to the county's plan are gonna have yes. to be incorporated by the county. Yes. What, is, what is the deadline to make suggestions and request them to make changes. I, I will call them tomorrow again, answer. Okay, and I'm happy to follow up phone calls too. Just let's, yeah. let, we'll just, that's I think an important piece of information. Can I add, if it involves the um, alteration to resurface Mamaroneck Avenue, that has already been bid out and awarded. Mm -hmm. We will be paved last. Uh, because we they missed the time frame that I provided uh, for the school, mm -hmm. and and now of course exacerbated um, um, the the issue has been ex exacerbated by the generators uh, because of our substation damage. Um, so we lucked out um, in a uh, uh, in in a matter of speaking, um, but it would be a change like a change order type of situation, I think, Nora to the contract, which wouldn't be um, a big deal as long as um, we get them something, I would say probably because they plan on paving us um, when school goes out at the end of June. Okay, so we might be able there's to- some time. Changes. Yeah, yeah, there's some time. Okay, we should just let's confirm that and then work with Matt, right? Okay. Okay, so the, the I, need Dan, Dan, did you have a chance to ask Carmody about my question or not? I, I did. Um, he he was a little reticent about uh, looking at an all-way stop, uh, but I will follow up with him. Okay, uh, so so we need feedback from Carmody. We need a drop dead date from uh, the county. Is that correct? Okay. That's correct. Okay, so let's leave this on the agenda for those two items at, at, in two weeks. Is that fair? You think we can get all that information in two weeks? Mm -hmm. May Mayor, can I ask one thing of the board? How does um, Legislator Parker loop into this? Well, she's, that's what I don't understand. Catherine is. Catherine had sent um, an email suggesting we add a bike lane. 
Yeah. Okay. That's what it was. Okay. That's, yeah. That's what, that's what kicked this whole thing off. Okay. But, fine. Would yeah. You, that, that would require and, that would require a big infrastructure change. Am I right? Right. And I think there was a conversation about having a bike lane in the middle of the road, or oh. on one side of the road. And that's a Matt Carmody question. Okay. Uh, it, yeah. Jerry, it was just whether to include this Mamaroneck repave, Avenue repaving project as part of the Safe Streets Initiative that the county is working on. Mm -hmm. It may involve merely, you know, painting things in a certain way. I don't mm -hmm. know, okay. but but that's where Catherine ties in. Okay, that's well, good. And I, I do know the fire department did weigh in on uh, the concern about um, uh, the pedestrian island and uh, the bike lane. Yep. Right. Victor, have you heard anything from the fire department about that? No? Okay. Uh, okay, the next item is PLLE 2020. Uh, this is the 50 foot setback. Now I know this isn't a popular topic right now because we just had flooding in the village. Uh, but if you look at uh, Phillips Park Road and the building that was built, it was built upon the foundation of an old building that uh, abutted the river. Uh, so there was no opportunity to make an improvement uh, to the river. If you look in practicality at what's been going on in this community, uh, especially on commercial properties, which is what this is about, it's not about residential properties. Uh, what we have is encroachment and uh, of the 50 foot setback all along the waterfront, uh, sometimes right to the water's edge. So what this is, it, to not allow the planning board the ability to alter that really just codifies the bad practices that we have. Uh, we discussed this many times before, and uh, you know the, the decision was made to give this back to the planning board. Uh, is, is there any, it, it, I'm not looking to beat a dead horse for the rest of my life. Is there any uh, room to move on this? I'm asking you folks, because if not, then I, I'm fine with just taking it off the agenda and moving on. But because you know we, we, we it, you know, just tell the people who are affected. I'm sorry, you're 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 out of luck. Uh, Natchez, you have your hand up. Yeah, um, we. I don't believe going back through the minutes that we agreed to put it back to the planning board. I know there was discussion about it. Uh, my big concern is and, uh, this board has expressed the desire to move the uh, wetlands permit to Harbor and Coastal Zone Management Commission, where I believe it should be. Um, I believe that this should be part of Harbor and Coastal Zone Management's uh, approach, uh, and it involves uh, significant policy issues, uh, you know, of how to proceed. Um, I have others. I have other issues with it. But that's where that's the main one, uh, and I think that there are issues of you know in the language that uh, I'm very concerned about that I expressed at the last meeting. Anybody else? I think we do need to provide property owners who were affected by PLLC um, with this late addition. I, I think we need to provide them a safety valve. I think it's important that we do that for particularly people with oddly shaped properties who feel like they can't improve them at all. I think it's important, you know. I, I've always thought it's important that it go to the planning board. I know the majority of this board thought then it should go to the zoning board. Now I'm hearing from Dan that it should go to HCZM, but I, th I still think the planning board's the place for it to be. But I think it's important that we have a safety valve for applicants to have a poss you know, a, a way to get a way to do the right thing here and to develop their property responsibly. Victor Noor. Well, I think the key is developing the property responsibly and and sometimes in the past the way these variances have been used have not been responsible or you know and I think that's that's on the village. Um, we were also asked by the flood mitigation committee to consider a moratorium on building in the flood zone until we figured out our flood laws and our stormwater laws and um, you know I'm very sensitive to the fact that people are upset and scared and frightened. And um, I think there needs to be community conversation about this. Victor? He's muted. 
think Mr. Natchez raised his hand. So go ahead, go ahead, Dan. I'll go after you. No, I just uh, I agree. I agree, Kelly. That we should have a quote safety valve, but I think we need to have a safety valve that is consistent with the policies of the LWRP uh, and a procedure to do that, and a procedure to do it in terms of the wetlands law as well, uh, which is you know. Um, you know, been worked on and being worked on, I guess. Uh, and we'll be, um, an earlier version was sent to this um, board of almost a year ago, but uh, I understand it's being revised again by HCZM. But I think it's important to do that. I think we need to be more, uh, more specific in terms of uh, setting forth the goals that are in the policies, you know, for the exceptions and how they need to be done. Uh, I'm happy to spend time going through it, but we have a lot on the agenda. Uh, I don't think it's going to make a difference whether we do it tonight or we do it in another two weeks or whatever. Victor, you had your hand up. Are you done, Mr. Natchez? Yeah. I think you're done. You're finished? Okay. Then, then I, I, I think the key is, is to have, the devil is in the details. Even if, there, if it's one or the other, and I, I really come after studying this for a while that that it should be the planning board with the with the act with with the right safeguards on the HCCM front it's really an interplay and that's what we heard the three two or three times that we took it around to them so that's why i, I think the best is to have like a technical discussion with them and with the land use lawyers in addition to our village attorney that can we, they are, they will be the people doing this I think we know what the objectives are, which are not to have large structures built in the wrong way on, on, on the buffer or in the floodplain. This is such a very a serious conversation and, and it's not about where I want it or how, how it, it's required that that technical expertise. So I, I recommend that we have a dedicated meeting on this issue in particular. So that it's not just drags, but it, we address it and also add to that meeting the larger issues of, of where all our laws converge or diverge on building on, on the floodplain. And are, do, are we, are we, do we have at least the laws on the books? And then of course, with, because that's important or even more is to have the, the, uh, the administrative staff to, to be able to do this. Now we know having, as, and with, with all the procedures and the, People being affected, you know how, how uh, we need to address details. And well, it's, now we're even even. And I thank uh, Jerry for for even uh, you know waiving some fees. But it's not just waiving the fees, but but having having what what requirements are, are we asking? And and I know maybe maybe I have some some waivers uh, for for anything that has to do with improvements. Uh, so I think this is a serious conversation. Of course, I don't want to drag it. But I think a dedicated discussion with the heads of the of the HCCM planning board and land use council, we, we can we can certainly uh, dedicate one hour or two for that and get the conversation running to so that we get technical response, not just us crafting the law. It's not going to happen. We've been a year and a half on it, and it's very complicated. Even if I, I try to rely on the model code that. The, Department of State has been drafting since they passed the resilience law, climate change. Many municipalities are working on this. So, I, but I, I think we need the right, the right uh, technical support and legal support to do this. Yeah, uh, you know, I, 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 I agree it should be for in, in the purview of the planning board. I've always thought it should be the purview of the planning board. I, I, I thought it was, you know, uh, way too complicated to uh, send it to H, to send it to uh, the zoning board. Uh, I'm glad that finally that we came back to the planning board uh, because you know that that is you know the, the board that really has to make the design decision and uh, you know has to do the site plan and it really uh, they, they would it'd be in the best position to affect positive change. Uh, I, I don't want to I mean no matter what the planning board does the, the project has to go to HCZMC. So I, I think that they'll always have their uh, their hand in it. Uh, I just I'm fine with taking this off the agenda for right now and putting it on again next year when we have a meeting with uh, the planning board, I think, and White Osterman 
and uh, Bob Scolzino and uh, hashing it out just in a, in a meeting like you suggest. I think that that's a good idea. Uh, but I think we have to do something eventually because what we've done now uh, just locks in stone the bad practices that have gone on for generations and for decades. You, know, you can walk along the Marinick and the Sheldrick River and uh, see uh, you know, the, uh, the building right up until uh, the, the water line all throughout the community. Um, listen, if, if, if this was, you know, if we, if this was uh, 16, whatever, when John Richville was buying it, uh, it would be a great idea to just say, you know, 100 feet from the river, you don't build anything. But we did, and we have, and, uh, you know, people own these properties. And what we did with PLLC uh, really, you know, could be construed by people as a taking. Uh, because we uh, really took away their ability to do anything, even anything positive on their property, that would be an improvement they couldn't do. So I, I don't want to have this on the agenda ad nauseum until we have that meeting with the planning board. Uh, I would suggest, you know, we talk to the planning board about maybe the end of the year, beginning of the next year, having a meeting with them and uh, working this out and just hashing it out in one meeting and not going back and forth forever. Uh, so that's where I am with this. But thank you for at least having some discussion about it tonight. Well, why? Uh, why so far? Why so far uh, out? Because yeah, there's, there's, so far there's out? a lot going on right now. There's, the village is still in a recovery mode. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think that, uh, you know, just throwing this to the planning board and saying, hey, let's, re you know, we're, we're pretty close to the end of the year as it is right now. We're, we're almost in October. And then things start happening. And uh, the holidays are here before you know it. So I'm just I'm trying to be realistic. In any sense, I think it would make sense because it will be a substantive discussion to do it after the organizational meeting in December when the membership is set and the chairmanship is set. Well, let's get it on the calendar now because if we wait till after the organization meeting. That'll put it into late January or February. Let's let's, let's make it a Christmas gift to ourselves. <laughs> I, I don't have any problems meeting with the planning board uh, chair, uh, but I think we also should have the uh, Harbor Coastal Zone Management part of that uh, discussion and meeting. No, but Dan, you're the only one that wants to send it to HCZMC. That, Regardless but what, what, you, what you've suggested is not where you send it. We suggest working out what to do. And I'm suggesting that that be part of it. I think whatever we come up with is going to have to be consistent with the LWRP, and I think there's it's beneficial okay. to get HCZM involved sooner than later because they are going to be reviewing anything. So I well, think the, that well, even the planning board chair and the CZM chair, or well, it's, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to just be the chair, but. Um, no, if you try and have a meeting with a full planning board, a full HCC no, and a full board of trustees. I'm not saying the full planning board, but um, then, then it's the chair's job. Or or somebody that the that the planning board or HCCM so designates. Okay, that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I do have to dissent. I, I think this is such a serious topic that it should be picked up. Uh, yeah. maybe late October, maybe in a month, we, we, we're going to have a dedicated meeting for it, but the, discussing how, how we should look, move forward on, on building on the floodplain is, is such a critical decision. I, okay. I, I would be in favor of having the discussion before, before, uh, before November, before November is gone. You know, I, I, I it, it, it's, it's, that's striking to me because, you know, this has been on the agenda since uh, September, 2020, and uh, we screwed up uh, on PLLC a year before that. So that this has to be done in the next month, it doesn't make sense to me. Have a conversation, okay. Well, that, that was my, that, well, that's my voice. That's one single voice. Okay. Let me, how about if I try and circulate some dates and see when we can get the earliest date that this could happen? Fine. Okay. I'll find some dates and I'll work and I'll figure out how to do the, the, the village has a doodle poll. So maybe we can get an earlier date. Okay. Uh, marijuana regulation and taxation. Uh, 
Okay, so let me turn to that in my folder here. Okay, uh, the question before us is whether to pass a law opting out of, uh, uh, to be a community that opts out of A having, pardon me, of A having uh, dispensaries and uh, smoking lounge. Did I call it lounges? I forget the terminology. I think On site consumption uh, licenses. Consumption licenses and uh, a dispensary. Or consumption establishments. Right. Which, which let's just call it a, a smoking lounge because that, that sounded right. Uh, you know, I, I, I can see opting out of the lounges because to me, that's just another place uh, where people can get intoxicated. Uh, but, you know, to opt out, and this is my view, to opt out of the dispensaries is uh, opting out of an economic opportunity that this community and every community could use. Uh, it, it, it has a direct sales tax uh, benefit, which is something that we have, we, we don't have in any other sales. No other sales tax uh, is a direct benefit to the community. So there's one aspect of that. And then in my view, the other aspect of that is that, you know, from a historical perspective, uh, the legal, the illegalization, the criminalization, uh, the demonization of marijuana has a long uh, history in this country that has been tied to uh, discrimination against people of color. Uh, that started uh, at the turn of the last century and uh, continued through the war on drugs. Uh, and the penalty, in my view, never fit the crime. Uh, marijuana is not heroin, marijuana is not cocaine. Uh, while I would not Suggest that anybody smoke marijuana. You know, from my point of view, no one. You know, uh, I, I see no benefit to drinking alcohol. Uh, so it's not like I'm recommending the use of marijuana, but I'm, I'm, I'm uh, I think, recognizing the facts that people do use marijuana. Many people use marijuana very safely. Uh, this dispensary is, from what I've witnessed firsthand and what I've read about, are uh, usually very well run and uh, very uh, you know, uh, well maintained and you have to show an ID before they will open the door for you, unlike a liquor store. And you know, they, that there's been much success in a, a lot of communities having this. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating a black market for marijuana in, Mar in Mamaritic. We're saying that you can't buy marijuana legally in Mamaritic. Uh, so we'll just be doing the same situation uh, that, that's happening now. Uh, and you know what? Part of the passage of this law uh, was to try and right historical wrongs and the, uh, the use of marijuana criminalization against people of color, giving people of color uh, a, a, an opportunity to get into this business and uh, you know, uh, re recoup uh, something from what they lost over the years. Uh, so I'm not in favor of opting out for, for dispensaries. I can see opting out for lounges. Uh, you know, it, I, I think that this was something that many people worked decades uh, trying to, you know, stop the uh, criminalization of marijuana, to stop the jails being full of uh, young uh, people of color. Uh, for basically the same crime that a lot of white kids were doing, especially that this white kid was doing it. And uh, we didn't have the same repercussions that other folks had. And uh, I think that part of this bill that the, the New York State passed was to redress that. And uh, you know, we have to be cognizant of that. And to opt out of it is to say that, you know, we're not willing to do our share to uh, make that whole. And I, I, I don't believe that uh, if we opt out, I, I, I don't have faith that we'll opt back in today uh, because I think that it would just be too hard politically. But uh, that's where I am on this. I, I know that there's other opinions, but I just, I wasn't here for the last meeting. So I wanted to get that out. So 
I guess the question is, is there, is there a impetus on a board to create a law to put on the books uh, and what that law would be, whether it would be both uh, lounges and dispensaries or would it be one or the other? So I'd like to hear your thoughts. Kelly, you have your hand up. Um, I do. Dan Dan had his hand up as oh, well. Sorry, you Dan. Dan, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Kelly. I'll let you talk, then I'll go. Okay, I'll, I'll try to keep it brief because I've made my views um, pretty clear in the past. I, I would support going forward with a local law opting out of the on-site consumption licenses. I think those are problematic in the same way that bars are problematic. Um, not that I'm looking to outlaw bars, but I, I do think just having people um, get high within the village and then get on the road is 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 something that we should um, not encourage. Um, but I do think that retail dispensaries, like Tom, I, I've seen them in other states. I think they are run better than liquor stores I've been in. Um, I personally don't think, I, I think we should treat marijuana like alcohol in the village. I don't think you should be able to use marijuana in a public park. I don't think you should be able to smoke in a public park, even in a little designated area. Um, I think all those things, all those uh, time, place, and manner um, regulations, I, I fear that if we try to address those now, if, that if we say we're going to opt out now and then address all the time, place, manner regulations, you know, that is just a way of saying we're opting out. I think the, and I don't think we'll end up coming back and opting in. I think those dispensaries will be located elsewhere. The market will be, um, you know, finished. The people are going to go, you know, the stores are going to go where, where they're allowed to go. And we're just, we're going to lose a lot of um, tax income. I, I do think that, a lot of the discussion is really a discussion of whether marijuana should be legalized or not. And I think that discussion is over. Um, it's whether we want to have a retail establishment in the village where people may sell and purchase cannabis in a highly regulated way. I think that's what we're talking about. Um, it, it, and I think there's a lot of noise on the periphery that confuses the issue. I'm done. Dan, um, I'm happy to go, but Chief, did you want to say something? Because I'm happy to let you go first if you want. Um, yeah, I mean, I spoke at one of the other meetings already. So, you know, I know this is a, a very hot topic. Um, you know, I guess my first question is, you know, whether you can opt out of one and not the other. I'm not too familiar about that aspect of it. Um, the other concern I have is, you know, just waiting to, you know, opt out and just waiting to see what other municipalities have experienced in terms of, you know, any kinds of issues. I mean, there might not be any, but but we don't know that yet. Um, and then, you know, in terms of, you know, people want to use it, you know, that's, they have that, that option, um, but they can come here easily and buy it and then, you know, use it right away. Not to say that they have to go to a lounge and smoke it, they can just use it right away. Um, and then, you know, hopefully it is regulated. I know that they do have, they're very specific on who can enter premises and they have to show license and things like that, but there are fake IDs. There are kids who try to get alcohol from an adult that waits, you know, waits outside and has the adult go in and pay. Alcohol that might happen with marijuana as well. So I'm just trying to think of all these other aspects. Um, so that's my two cents on that. Thank you, Chief. Dan? My concern, first of all, I'm not against or for any of these. I am concerned that there are significant unintended consequences that can be created with this. We have, uh, there, a lot of it is gonna be dependent upon what the state does with its regulations and what we can and cannot do with our regulations. Uh, it works well in some states. It has not worked well as, as well in some other states. Um, I crafted a resolution that was circulated uh, to opt out. Uh, I know that Mark sent a draft 
legislation for opt out, which I have no problems with. Um, you know, I understand that people have medical benefits. Uh, I don't minimize them. Uh, uh, everybody has, uh, talks about, uh, or ninety percent of all the comments talk about uh, the financial benefits the village will get. Um, my research has shown that the average uh, purchase at the retail stores is approximately somewhere between $100 and $200, but more towards the lower end than the higher end in most states. At least that's what I am told by uh, people who um, have done this, uh, you, know, you know, who are running these stores or own these stores. Uh, you translate that into what the village gets. Uh, you can, you know, until you get to about a million dollars, uh, in retail sales, the village isn't getting any significant amount of money that makes a dent in our budget one way or the other. Uh, that, you know, would, uh, at a million dollars, we would get $30,000. Uh, but that also translates to, if you take, do the math, a uh, significant amount of traffic uh, of people, whether it's automobiles or uh, not. Uh, and that's going to create that, that those are issues that need to be anticipated and uh, guarded against so that we don't have significant problems. Romarnik uh, has tremendous traffic problems. Uh, you know, all you have to do is try and travel the streets during the day, um, you know, either preschool, uh, you know, right after, you know, school uh, are the worst possible times uh, trying to go places. Um, so uh, my view is that I have very, I have great confidence in future boards as well as this board. Uh, that we can opt out now, because if we don't opt now, we will never be able to have that ability to do that later on. Uh, but we do have the ability, if we do opt out now, to be able to opt in at a later date. Uh, and I have confidence that if it can be done meaningfully and reasonably and in a way that does not uh, disturb the quality of life for the, you know, for the entire community, that's a way of do, being able to do it. And it's a more prudent approach to it. Uh, so I have uh, created this um, resolution, if you will. I think what we need is a very uh, you know, meaningful public discussion about it. Um, I, would, uh, I think it needs to be focused, not just here's, you know, do we want to opt in or not? Uh, I would like to have uh, the resolution put forward for people to focus on to be in favor of or against or neutral and express their idea, their, their reasoning uh, based upon the issues that you know, are outlined. And I think that makes a lot more sense um, than a lot of the issues that I see in uh, a lot of people who have stopped and talked to me, which uh, are, um, are less factual than uh, I think are necessary. Uh, and I think that this would this would help uh, the discussion. So that's my view. Uh, I just want to point out this: we're not, we're not talking about passing a resolution. We're talking about passing a law. It has to be a law. I'm, it, it, my yeah. resolution is to in, is to pass a law to opt out. And yeah. Mark's, yeah. Mark's approach or draft is for the actual law. Yeah. But, but, but let's just deal with the law, which is what this is about. Right. You don't make the I, th I think the two are combined there. I don't. And you had your chance. And I'm just you know, so we're talking about passing a law, not passing the resolution. Uh, and to say that a retail establishment, any retail business, uh, we wouldn't want it because it causes traffic. Uh, I, I don't know what kind of retail business in some sense doesn't cause traffic. Uh, if you're selling ice cream cones, that's going to cause a heck of a lot more traffic than if you're selling weed. Uh, so I, I don't see using traffic uh, as a uh, as a solid argument against this. Uh, you know, because anything what we're talking about is renting storefronts, right? Any storefront, uh, no matter what uh, they're selling, they want people to come there. Uh, they're not growing customers inside the store. They want people to come to the store. So let, let's just you know let, let's just have some realistic conversations because you know there's there's oftentimes with downtown we don't have it here but if you look at Largemont which opt out and some other of these communities that opt out they have a lot of empty storefronts that go begging every year 
And uh, you know, so to turn away any business uh, for those uh, landlords and for those taxpayers it, it is significant. It's not just about the, the sales tax, it's about foot traffic to the community too. So I just, you know, it's, let's not make this an argument about traffic because it's not about traffic. It's about whether we think that this is a good business or a bad business in our community. Victor and Nora. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we, I, 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 I have a lot of concerns simply because the cannabis boards are just barely being formed by the new governor. We don't know what the regulations are gonna be. Um, because we are in a village, half of our taxes go to the towns in which we're in on if they don't opt out, unless we have come to some prearranged arrangement with them. So at a minimum, before we agree to have um, retail establishments, I don't think we should have on-site consumption establishments, but before we agree to have retail establishments, we need to make it make sure that we don't have to give one and a half of the 3% of taxes to the towns of Rye and the towns of Ameranek. The town of Ameranek decided last week that they were going to opt out. So they, they didn't pass a local law. They had a conversation. They'll be, they'll have the same conversation we're having now. So I'm concerned that it isn't the amount of tax revenue that we thought we would be getting. Um, and that we should have the public hearing about this to actually try to gauge the public's opinion on this. So I think we should schedule a public hearing. Um, and, I, and I'm looking at the, I've looked at the law that Mark sent today and it, it's the language is slightly different than the model law that NICOM has passed. So has, has recommended. So I guess we just uh, need to make sure that this is, that we're on the same page and that we have the right phrasing in whatever law we decide to, if we decide to schedule a public hearing on that we are phrasing it correctly. So just one thing, the, the phrasing on this, the, the draft that I sent tracks the language of the actual cannabis law as it allows municipalities to so-called opt out of it. So it tracks the language of, you know, requesting from the cannabis board. That, that's why the reason that language was in there. But the, and the model laws have slightly different language and I don't know if it matters. You know, I just don't know if it matters, but I think oh. we should. Because My judgment is it matters significantly. Opt out. We all talk about opting out, but there's nothing in the statute that says opt out. It says you make a specific, by local law, make a specific request of the cannabis board. So that's why we wrote it that way. This is why we have a village attorney. Thank you. This is this is uh, good yeah. to good to know. Appreciate that. Um, okay. So I. I I, let, let's just put this to bed. Is there a consensus, uh, at least three people who want this uh, to be, to schedule a public hearing at the next Board of Trustees board? Well, I, I would schedule a public hearing on opting out of the on-site consumption establishments. That's as far as I would go because I, I don't think we should opt out of the others. So I don't know whether we re need to redo the proposed law to include it separately or whether we need to have, you know, both in one, it just, I mean, if, if, if it were up to me, if it were my proposed law, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't opt, you know, I wouldn't include the language on retail dispensary licenses. I would only talk about on-site consumption establishments. If you want to opt out of one, but not the other, the law has to say that. And that, that, that's what, that's the way I would change the proposed law for public hearing. And that's what I would support too. But my question is, all right, so let, let's just put that on the side. Kelly and I would support that. Uh, my, my, my real question is, do the other three, would you, uh, are you in favor of opting out to the whole Megillah? And because if that's the case, then we need to do the law that way. So I'm just trying, I'm just trying to work the mechanics of this. I think the public hearing needs to be opting out of both. I think that's the law we need to be discussing. Victor, is that what you want to do? Yeah. And Mr. Natchez, I assume that's what you want to do. Yes. Okay. So why don't we schedule on the next Board of Trustees regular work session, not in the work session, on the next Board of Trustees regular meeting, uh, have the proposed, you know, set a date for the, for the public hearing. Okay. 
Is that a floor advice book? Do we have time? I have no problems with that. I would also ask in the interim whether Mark can check or coordinate with um, uh, his language with uh, NICOM's lawyer just to make sure that we're, you know, uh, your interpretation is, you know, is fine and we're not losing anything. That's all. I'm not in the habit of checking my drafting with NICOM. No, I, the board I, I, directs me to do that. I'll do it, but I, I think that'll work that way. That's absurd. They're they're not they're nice people. Frankly, I have I passed as a judge on hundreds of laws and the language of what they mean far more than anybody at NICOM has ever considered. Thank you. Um, and on the same vein, I think we need to think about parks and what? not allowing cannabis products to be smoked. Okay, that's just, I, I agree with you. That's a separate. That's a right, separate. But I think I, I I think you know is it closely enough related that we can have that for discussion next week or two weeks and make it a priority because I think this is something we've talked about. I mean, this has been you know, I guess the law went into effect in immediately when it was passed in March. And I think this is a problem that we haven't solved yet. And maybe it's a problem that's not too hard, difficult for us to solve. Well, let, let's put it on a work session because we haven't really discussed it. Well, we'd have, we would need a new law for that, right? We would need a new proposed law. No, 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 we would need to amend our current law about smoking in parks. Right. Right. Yes, but yes. I'm saying, Nora, that it's a separate law. Yes. I know, I'm just, it's it's related to this and it seems like it's something else we should have addressed as part of this topic. But, 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 but this is time sensitive. If you, if, and listen, yep. I don't want to do it, but I'm being honest, if you want to do it, we got to start doing it. Yep. Uh, the capital plan, I don't think we're going to- So Mayor, before you move on, the board had discussed early on in this that it might want to hold, want to schedule a referendum mm -hmm. rather than just allow this to be per a permissive referendum which you can do. Do I understand the board's intent at this point to just allow this to be a, a subject of permissive referendum rather than to schedule a referendum? I, I, I think it should be just a, a permissive referendum. Then, you know, you know, we're gonna drag people to polls in 60 days to do this. I, I think if we're gonna make a decision, make a decision. I agree. I don't, I think it should be no, a permissive referendum, not a scheduled referendum. Victor, you had your hand up? Yeah, we, we have a Mark's proposed law. Why to, don't we just schedule the public hearing so that there's not just one, but maybe two or three opportunities for, for the public to, to weigh in? I think that's my, my main goal here. I mean, yeah, move it, move it to, do you want to move it to tonight's agenda to schedule? Why not? Well, I, I would suggest that you allow us to put some rationale in it. Yes, because uh, the... Which, yeah. What I was going to do was suggest that we take the uh, some of the language from Trustee Natchez's resolution and put it in there. Uh, you can you can if you want to move it forward tonight, you can just take out that section that has findings. You know the the, the one piece that has findings. No, if you I, want to advance it. Listen, I mean, we talk about procedure. Let's follow procedure. And the procedure is it goes on. You know the, the next regular meeting. Right. Mean? I think Tom, what he was saying is the, the proposed local law G that we have from Mark in paragraph A2 says the board of trustees finds and determines that, and then there's a long line. It, it needs language in there. Right. I understand that too. But, if it, uh, but what I'm saying is uh, just on a matter of procedure, you know, it, it, how it works is some, you, you, unless it's something that has to be done that night, you, you put it to the next uh, board of trustees regular session. That's how we've been working. It. And you know, we're talking about keeping a procedure let's keep the procedure and let's not just jump all over the place based upon whims agree that's what we have we have we have all the elements and we, it's we, sensitive that's why i suggested it i'm not saying we skip but it's been okay on the book it is time time sensitive and we have all the elements if we, if we, if we agree then fine if, if others don't think it's enough then i, I think we i'm should. okay either way i'm okay either way okay uh let's let's move on to something else Okay, let's go to F, use of public funds and private property. We don't have time for capital budget. Before we go on, uh, I just want to make clear where we're going. We were, we're putting this on to be put, to set a public hearing at the next meeting or we're putting it on tonight? I did not understand where you ended up. We're putting it on to schedule a public hearing. This is the way all laws work. 
we're scheduling the public hearing at the next meeting. And then in the end of, so that'll be the first meeting in November. Uh, no, the first meeting in October. It'll be a public hearing, the second meeting in October. November. No. The second meeting in October. It goes October. very, way, way back. And it has to be a month? How long do yeah. you need for a public hearing? 10 days. No, you can do it at your next meeting. The only time you, you usually don't do it at your next meeting when you want to leave time for the other boards to comment, but this is not as the land use law. So you're not leaving time for the other boards to comment. So, so let me just get this out. At the first meeting in October, we scheduled a public hearing for the second meeting in October. We opened a public hearing and the second meeting in October, listen to the public, make our decision, vote, you're done. Well, that's October 12th, Tuesday. And then Monday, yeah. October 25th. Correct. But that only gives one chance to the public. If we anticipate it, it would give two. That's what my rationale for doing it today. Why would you need two? Just, it's, it, I think it's a very important topic for our residents. Then you have November. I mean, people might want to come out and talk about uh, the scheduling of public hearing. And if, <coughs> I, if we, hold on. You do it tonight. You you haven't given us an opportunity to notice that that was going to happen. People might want to you know talk positively or negatively about the scheduling of public hearing. If we sneak it on the agenda tonight, they don't have that opportunity. Okay. Cut both ways. And and we don't have the law yeah. drafted the way it needs to be heard. I mean, okay. we've do, we've made changes to it in this work session. Okay. So I think it, um, if we're going to schedule it at our next meeting, that Bob can and uh, Mark can finish, you know, put the language that is necessary in and uh, put the preamble in as well or the findings. Yeah. That, that would be a more solid uh, thing for people to focus on. Yes, we can do that. And it's an and and not an and or. All right. Hold on a second. Okay, uh, we have to go on to the stuff that we have to do tonight. Uh, Dan Sonoff. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the only things that we have to do tonight under new are, are under new business, or I'm missing something under old business. Uh, we have Municipality Five uh, under old business. Uh, Park citation manager. I, I left that on by accident, so. We discussed that at the last meeting. That's on for action tonight. Uh, and I think uh, we have the water, the waterworks items. Uh, and I believe you know the. I'm asking Dan. Listen to me. I'm asking on the old business. Oh. Anything else besides Municipality Five? Oh no, I'm sorry. Okay, let's go to Municipality Five. One uh, J. Dan, you want to give us a quick? Yeah, we 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 got the uh, the quote for the Municipality Five package. Uh, Trustee Natchez had asked whether we were comfortable that we we're getting all the modules that we needed. The answer is yes. Uh, we have checked our references. Uh, I believe the quote was something in the order of was it ninety one thousand and change, Augie? Ninety and change. Ninety and change. So uh, that was the. Uh, uh, the quote that we received from general code for the Municipality five product. And we, we'd very much like to move forward so we can begin the implementation and schedule out uh, the all implementing all the modules in a uh, orderly fashion. Okay, anybody have any questions or concerns? Yeah, I have two questions. Um, one is, does the amount in there include training or not? I believe training is included. Uh, so the it is included. The second question is: It uh, their normal three months, or is it a longer? Do we if we bought a longer or proposing a longer period? Uh, I have to take a look at the uh, proposal. Give me a moment. Uh, 
Uh, I don't have the proposal with me. Okay. Uh, I hate to put you on the spot, Ogi, but do you have it by any chance? No. Okay. Um, I, I, I can look it up in between uh, the work session regular meeting and get the, have the answer for you. Okay. The other, the other question is back in 2015, uh, prior to my joining the board, the board act voted to uh, $61,000 for municipal five. Did we actually pay them and are we getting one? Is that part of, is that being carried forward or what, where are we? Uh, we, we paid for half of it. We did implement some packages. I think we are getting a $20,000 credit towards sorry, the- we're getting, towards, we're getting how much, I'm sorry? Uh, uh, a little over $20,000 in credits towards this purchase. Because we did implement some aspects of Municipality 5 uh, back in 2015, and we had paid, I think, 30000 and change. So we, we believe that's a fair uh, compensation for uh, what we did not get delivered in the past. So we only paid 30000 and change, and we're getting a 20000 plus credit or something like that, correct? That's correct. That's correct. So we did not spend the 61000 back in... We did not. Okay. That's what I'm all in favor of moving forward. I hope this works um, because it's badly needed. Yeah. And we don't have a choice uh, with the um, with our with everything expiring in December. Okay. Hey, anybody else? I mean, you know, we have to do it. I'm a little trepidatious because it's not I municipality mean, wasn't great for us, and we tried something else, and that wasn't great. So I'm just hoping third time is the charm, and that you know, we're able to make this work and able to get the records in the shape that they are supposed to be and legally required to be in. Okay. Uh, everybody else, final put this on for regular meeting. Yes. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda that we need for the regular meeting is uh, 2B. We're not 2B. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for laughing at too. Uh, this is which is to be uh, to be one the filtration plan. These are these are Westchester County capital products. Uh, the first is the filtration plant. Uh, for that. Somebody have any, have you all looked at this? Does anybody have any questions? The next step in funding the filtration plant. The, uh, but we need to approve all of them tonight, not just the filtration plant. Yes, the, all of them. I'm just, I'm going one at a time. I mean, it's, it's, so it's the filtration plant, uh, the chlorination system, uh, Anderson Road press release. Chlorination system, shaft 22, New York City is reducing the amount of chlorine in the water. By the time it gets to us, it needs to be rechlorinated. Uh, we at one point had a chlorination facility in Yonkers uh, that we shared with the city of Yonkers. Uh, we, are, we are going to reactivate that chlorination system uh, because it, it, with the city's reduction in the chlorination system, by the time the water got down to us, uh, it, it, it needed to be rechlorinated. Uh, pressure relief valves, uh, pressure regulator valves. Uh, that is uh, our connections between the Westchester Joint Water Works. We sell water to the Suez Water Company. Uh, and what will happen is in times of high demand, uh, the Suez Water Company uh, is, is pulling on us and this, th these valves will allow us to reduce pressure to uh, Suez to make sure that the folks in that we serve uh, have enough pressure uh, for uh, firefighting, mostly for firefighting. Uh, you know this uh, this has happened before, uh, where you know during high demand in the summer, people watering their lawns, uh, the pressure gets to a dangerous point, and we don't want it at a dangerous point where it would put anybody in jeopardy. It hadn't happened, but you know, in, uh, in the idea of uh, making sure it doesn't. Uh, this is what they proposed. Uh, the other ones, anybody have any questions on Weaver Street pump station modifications? Yeah. 
Well, what? Wait a minute. There's the one. At, there's the one before. Paul Customer Meter and PRV Vault at Osborne Road. Yeah, I think that's the same thing. It, it's to connect with uh, Suez. Okay. There are two different connect with Suez products. Okay. The, the PRVs. It's a right. pressure regulator valve. And so the Weaver Street's the same thing. Yes, Weaver Street, same thing. Uh, the Weaver Street, as I'm sure you know, Nor is in the uh, the, the uh, oh, yeah. nature center over there. Yep. I don't have questions about this resolutions, but on a the related resolution that is not in our work session, but in the regular session, there's a bonding on joint waterworks projects. All the others I understand, but I, I asked a question I haven't had a chance to review. Uh, typically we do have those resolutions re revised here in, in work session. And I, I don't think we did, I was not, I, I don't think you did it last time. And I, I so that resolutions on bonding, um, I think should be cleared now. I don't have any questions on Let's talk about that on vehicles, Acela, dump trucks, because I know I remember the street surfacing, the docks and pilings. I remember Stanley Avenue roof. I remember and sewer and water mains is 4.8 million. And I asked for a breakdown. Can you go through it? And can we clear that now before we go to regular session? Okay, this is on the bonding, the bond resolution. I think all you sent out. Oh, you sent out a little primer here. Did anybody get a chance to see this? I'm just so opening it. It goes through each of them. Oh, you want to go through them? It's up to Victor. What he wants us to do. Or what he I, I'm just opening. So what, what is in that resolution? What, what, what are we paying? Are we bonding in there? Okay, why don't we talk about, it's, it's a bond resolution for $6,437,604. Mm -hmm. It goes through many different projects not mm -hmm. okay uh, well why don't we just go through each of them quickly so this is, is that an email that came at 4 34 okay yes okay so we're done with the the resolutions on the westchester joint waterworks we're oh, now doing right yeah, no we're going on they yep. go on the regular meeting yep good this is about yeah i, I got it i've got augie's email open yep or you go for it. So these bond resolutions are for projects that are already previously approved by the board. They're at their completion and we're going to go out to fund them. We'll start off with the five-year projects. The five-year projects are sanitation, new Ford pickup truck F-150. Uh, are, you, are you working from the memo you sent us? I'm, I'm trying to follow you. I sent you an email with the projects by five years. You asked me what makes up and I listed them all out for you. So it starts with a sewer system capital. Is that the one? Sanitary sewer system capital, yes. Sanitary sewer capital. Okay, go ahead. I list out the I list out the when it was approved, June 13, 2006. Okay, got it. Hydraulic cleaning and TV inspection, heavy hydraulic cleaning. Okay. Treatment and mobilization and demobilization. That was 74,673. Uh, the next one is the A is a water project, which is A 1316 Flagler Drive water main uh, treatment. On August 14th, uh, 2017, the resolution authorized the village to participate in the Western Joint Work Project A 13-16 uh, Flagler Drive water main replacement improvement, replacing improving water mains on Flagler Drive. Uh, the total project approved was 2.7 million. Uh, the next item is 2.217. No, but he, he's saying what was approved the total in the resolution was okay. What we're actually issuing money for is 2.217. It came in $500,000 out of budget. Go ahead. Olga. The next item is the Acela Asset Management Software for $193,815. That was approved on October 22nd, 2018. Um, Stanley Avenue roof we have can we can we stop at a cellar for a minute sure um I don't know why we're bonding we're in court on this are we not to get the money back we've already paid for it yes I mean we we're borrowing the money because we took a loan from general fund to fund this project 
I, I understand that, but we, uh, where are we on uh, in the status of the court on uh, court procedures on this? That's why we don't think so. On the cellar, the California, the California debacle. Yeah, we have uh, we have not initiated a lawsuit. They have not initiated a lawsuit. Okay, where what do we, I thought we would we had authorized proceeding on that? Did we not? We had engaged in some negotiation. We had done some study, but we did not authorize. I, I don't recall you're authorizing it. But we have not issued. We have not commenced a lawsuit. Okay, and where are we in negotiations? Nowhere. Me. Say again? Nowhere. They they want us to pay. We don't want to pay. We haven't, there's been no coming to a resolution okay. at all. So we, we, we have paid them or we have not paid them? We've paid in part. We have not paid everything they claim we owe them. Okay. So right now, what's before us is what we have paid. We are bonding what we have paid. This is what we, we paid 193,000? Yes. So can we move on? Um, uh, 234 Stanley Avenue roof, roof and rehabilitation for 438,314. That was authorized on October 15, 2019. And on November 23rd, 2020, um, the roof for 234 Stanley Avenue was in poor condition and had reached the end of its useful life and the village authorized repairs to be made. Next item is Arcata Sewers uh, Specs Repair and San Sanitary for 34,601. Uh, this was authorized on May 13, 2019. Um, it's a professional service agreement with Arcata's creating specific specifications for contract documents for the repair and rehabilitation of the village sanitary sewers. Uh, sanitation you pick up 150, 5,475. Uh, this was authorized on November 12, 2019. Uh, one truck for the sanitation division of the Department of Public Works. Uh, basically, uh, the resolution states that it was a 13 year old Chevy pickup truck assigned to lead maintenance mechanic and sanitation division which is approaching the useful life, its useful life, and by rust and rot, it needs to be replaced. Uh, the next project is for a non-functional water for 335,146 on April 8, 2019, authorization of the village participation in Westchester Water Works, a uh, local capital project for replacements in a non-functional vulnerable water infrastructure related to plan paving in the village of Marinick. Uh, the next item is a Westchester General Water Works project for 815,109. Uh, it's Barrymore water main replacement. This was authorized on May 13, 2019. Funding authorization for Westchester General Water Works, local capital project 1358, Barrymore Lane transit water main replacement. Uh, the project necessitates the replacement of approximately 1,400 linear feet of transit water main. Transit. Transite water main on Barrymore Lane, which has estimate cost of 900,000. Said project having been approved by West Joint Water Works Board of Trustees at their December 18, 2018 meeting. The next project is the Seven Oaks Lane water main for 408,705. This was authorized on December 18th. Uh, authorization of village participating in West Joint Water Water Works local capital projects. A1354, Seven Oaks Lane Transit. Transite. Uh, Transite. Transite. The project the states the replacement is approximately 900 feet of Transite water main on Seven Oaks Lane, which has been estimated cost of 575,000. Said project having been approved by Worcester's Joint Work at the December 18, 2018 meeting. The next project is another again, another Westchester General Water Works project on the Shore Acres Replacement Water Main. This was authorized on November 12th, 2019. Uh, authorization of Villa Participation in Worcester General Water Works project to replace 875 feet of Transite Water Main on Shore Acres Drive. Uh, one such project is Shore Acres. The total projected cost of this is 750000 I'll, I'll take it from here, Wolfie, because you're getting tired of reading. 
uh, Village Manager uh, Vehicle 2020 Ford F-150, February 10th authorization uh, to purchase vehicle for the Village Manager. The Village Manager's duties required that he shall have a vehicle provided to him by the Village and uh, business local travel to 60 miles in the Manager's residence. The Village shall be responsible for paying liability property and comprehensive insurance if the purchase, operation, maintenance, fuel repair, and necessary replacement of said vehicle. The next one is purchase two drunk trucks, um, two dump trucks, a Mac 42 FR and a Mac 44 FR. Authorization to purchase a dump salt plow truck and a dump salt truck for the highway division of the uh, public works. This project uh, cost in total $461,829.19. Uh, street resurfacing, Moran Brothers Street resurfacing, Fenimore. Author is uh, April 27, 2021. Authorization to execute an agreement with Consolidated Edison of New York for final restoration of Fenimore Road. Uh, Conrad has proposed providing payment to the village in the prescribed amount, which would be dedicated to the village uh, paving program. Uh, that's $31,967. Next is replacement of docks and pilings, $147,600. Uh, authorization, this is a, we, we voted on this February 20th, 2020, authorizing contract to custom marine, marine pile driving installation of new steel piles, removal of existing steel piles. And the next one is uh, Westchester Joint Waterworks, uh, Water Main, Rushmore to Orienta, uh, $222,370. Uh, replacement of Transite Water Main on Rushmore Avenue, extending into the Orienta Beach Club eas easement. Uh, Project is the emergency replacement of approximately 390 linear feet of transit water pipe on Rushmore Avenue, which extends onto Oriental Beach Easement at a total cost of 250. It came in, came in less than the estimated cost. The next is uh, Westchester Joint Waterworks, Rye Lake Distribution, accepting West to Joint Waterworks project, Rye Lake Distribution System Infrastructure Modifications. We did that on June 22nd uh, at a cost of 179930 Free. Uh, one to consist of modifications to violate distribution infrastructure in order to accommodate a future ultraviolet treatment plant at an estimated cost of 650, which based upon a proportional share of 27.69 equates to $180,000 for the village. And the last page uh, parks, two trucks, uh, two Ford F 250, and they actually look really nice with the uh, diamond plate in the back. Authorizing purchase of two trucks for the Parks Department that the village manager is authorized to purchase uh, two F-250s from Genesee Ford, and the whole thing comes to $83,100.50. Dock repairs and materials, October 26, establishing capital budget for dock repair uh, at Marinick Harbor Marina, and authorization to purchase material for dock repair, $69,686. The harbor master has developed a plan to rebuild 21 sections of the dock in advance of the uh, 2021 this year's boating season, and it just goes through how he's going to do it. But the, the total is $69,686. We approved that in October 26th of last year. Ooh, sewer video inspection. Uh, authorization to execute an intermissible agreement between the Village of America and the Town of America to purchase a sewer video inspection truck and brine machine. This was $84,350. Uh, Brevoort, uh, in water Brevoort Lane, water main replacement. Uh, replacement of Leakley water main on Brevoort Lane. Uh, one such project was replacement of nearly 250 feet of water main on Brevoort in the city of Rye, uh, which is considered a Westchester joint water work outside district at an estimated cost of $225,000. And that in sum and substance is everything that we're bonding that we've already approved. So this is just paying for stuff we've already authorized that we've taken out of uh, other funds. Is that right, Ogie? Correct. And so now these, this bonding will replenish those funds. That's correct. Okay. Any questions or concerns? I have a concern on uh, the uh, seller. I don't know how we can bond something as an asset that we are, don't have and don't use and isn't tangible of anything. 
Um, and I'm very concerned about that. Uh, if we have to eat the 193,000, we have to eat it, but I don't think we can bond it. Uh, so I can't support that. Um, you know, I understand, you know, the author, you know, the board, uh, board authorized it, um, but it, you know, we don't have it. So I don't know what you can bond on the same token on the, um, Flagler Drive. Um, I have no problems with the project, um, but I believe it uh, uh, should be a, um, um, a benefit district to uh, to that area. Okay, and there is no benefit district to that area. This has been a subject of litigation that the village has won, and to to come out with that now is to create a fiction which doesn't exist. I respect your opinion on that, and I don't agree with it. Thank you. Okay. But Everybody fine with this going on a regular meeting? Well, can we just follow up on the Acela question? I mean, that that's like let a me, good let question. Me ask, uh, Olga, why is it being bonded? We spent the money, and the money spent was came out of general fund. The options are either to bother, borrow the money and replenish general fund or appropriate for fund balance. I mean, but just Dan's technical question. Well, we, we did receive uh, stuff from the cell. It just didn't work. Is that correct? Yes. Go. No, you go. Or oh, yeah, I asked you. They built out. They built that software, but the database, our database, was never converted to go into that software. And basically, they, they don't have the know-how how to convert our database. But was there deliverable from them? The software was a deliverable, but without a, with a blank database. Right. It didn't work. It didn't work. I don't, I don't think is it like, is it akin to buying a car that's a lemon? We bought the car. We had the car. The car doesn't work. Well, I mean, it's akin to it in that we bought it and it doesn't work for our purposes, but there isn't like a lemon law for this. No, I'm just saying like, you know, or we bought a car that yeah, we bought it. It doesn't work for us. We don't like it. We're buying something else. Couldn't transfer the engine from one car to another. Right. I mean, just Dan asked a question and I'm just trying to figure out, wrap my head around. I mean, isn't, that, isn't that the question? Like, well, if we, do we, can we bond a purchase that we're not satisfied with? Is that the question? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we had a purchase. Uh, Bob, this is to you. Uh, the answer is you have to ask bond counsel. I'm not mm. an expert in what you can bond and what you can't bond. My understanding of bonding is that you have to have an asset that the, the, you know, the bond is, you know, is for. Well, we do have the asset. We have the software. We bought it. They gave it to us. Uh, you know what? Just to clarify, Bond Council prepared this resolution to bond that. So we're working under you know the guidance of the Bond Council in doing this. So here, this I'd, rather, I... I'd rather take that than you know someone who's not a lawyer saying that that that's not the case. So. You know, and assuming bond council understands that this was a dud of a purchase and we're having to replace it. Well, right, but you, I, I agree with you, but you know, we could buy a, a Ford F-150 and it, it, it couldn't work too. Right, I mean, they may not know that. Is there, I mean, is there any way to approve all of this? And if we if, it, if we learn we're not supposed to be bonding that piece of it, make it, it modify or not? I'm, I'm, I, I don't, I think the logistics of this are complicated for Augie and I don't want to complicate his life anymore. You know, I suggest that we, we approve this tonight uh, and have Augie uh, talk to the bond council tomorrow. And if Augie's not comfortable, then we got a plan B. Augie looks pretty comfortable. <laughs> well, if, once again, I'll follow up with bond council tomorrow. If he says that we can't bond for it, we, I will come back with a resolution to the board to appropriate from fund balance. Seems and good. I will advise the board tomorrow. His response. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Dan, and thanks, Augie. All right, guys. Uh, 
Wait, there's to... one more thing, Tom. What? What? I think you have to do D. D. Two D. It says it's on for tonight. Two D. Oh yeah, you're right, Nora. Thank you. Thank you. Good catch. Uh, awarded contract for tree and dead branch removal. So if I have a chance to look at this. Any questions? Nope. Any hands Fine up? with me if it's on for the regular meeting. Then it'll be on for the regular meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for catching that. You're welcome. All right. Uh, I make a motion we end the work session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll see you at 8 o'clock.
Hey, Warren. Good evening. Hey, Danny. You're on. Okay. Okay. Good evening. Welcome to the Village of Mamaroneck Board of Trustees meeting for September 27, 2021. Uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the Republic, to the stand, one nation, one nation to the God, indivisible, liberty, justice for all. Uh -huh. Before I get started, I promote Teresa uh, Collier to uh, just on the bottom. Okay. Uh, good evening. I need a motion to open this meeting. So move. move. Second. All in favor. Hi. Hi. Uh, okay, Just a couple of things tonight before we get started. Uh, we have a couple of proclamations and a presentation, uh, but I just wanted to talk briefly while there's still an audience before everybody has gone to bed about uh, the Herculean effort that the village of Mamaronek staff has put in uh, since September 1st, September 2nd flood. Uh, you know, I, I, I wish I could name everybody and everything that they did, but you know, I'm going to start by uh, talking about you know some of the key staff. Uh, the village manager Jerry Barbario worked tirelessly, overcame uh, fantastic logistical problems uh, with the sole purpose of getting his community back on its feet in a timely manner. Uh, I'm very grateful for him. Uh, Dan Sonoff uh, ably assisted him, especially at the uh, courthouse uh, where the recovery center was, making sure that our residents were taken care of. Uh, Augie Fusco, even though his home was destroyed, 
gave his all and uh, did his job and helped us recover here in the village uh, clerk treasurer's office. Chief DeRuza uh, went above and beyond the call of duty uh, and uh, her staff obviously, you know, did uh, a great job in saving lives on the night of the flood. Uh, Chief Vinnie Costa uh, worked tirelessly for what seemed to me to be at least 48 hours straight, uh, trying to get uh, folks both safe and then back on their feet. Uh, so I want to thank all of those uh, major uh, players, but I also just want to let you know that every employee of the village of Mamaroneck from the newest hire laborer to every police officer, every volunteer firefighter, every person in, in, who's an administrative assistant, the deputy clerks, the deputy treasurers, everybody uh, went way above and beyond the call of duty. Uh, they worked endless hours uh, with the sole purpose of helping the people of this community. And uh, it, it, we are very, very lucky to have all of those folks working for us and working for you. And if, if you know, it, it's always easy uh, to uh, beat up on uh, civil service workers, uh, but I'll tell you what, uh, and it's always easy to beat up on government, but if you needed government, you needed it uh, between now and September 1st. Uh, and these men and women did an amazing job. And uh, you know, we, we don't give out bonuses uh, in, in municipal life, but I, I do wanna give you my sincere thanks and heartfelt appreciation. I'm sure the board joins me in that. And the people of the village of Mamaroneck are truly blessed uh, by the civil servants, the emergency workers, our, our ambulance service. They all went out of their way to protect you. Many of them uh, risking their own lives. Uh, many of them doing it while their own homes were being flooded. Uh, and if that's not devotion to duty, I don't know what is. Uh, so I, I just wanted, before the meeting got uh, on, just to let people know how lucky they are to have these men and women working for us. Um, I, th I think that's uh, well said. Uh, I also think we need to thank all the outpouring of help in, uh, from neighbors, just not only within the village, but from other communities that came and work tirelessly to help and are continuing. And I think, and commend staff for continuing to uh, uh, get this village back on its uh, feet. Uh, you know, we still have a long way to go. Thank you. All right. And let me add one thing. No businesses. I know how businesses coming back online, like the supermarket, um, that, 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 the amazing work they did. And I just on the chief side, the other two chiefs, uh, I think deserve also to be mentioned. I know, I know it can't be all encompassing, but since I heard all their uh, details of what was done, uh, Chief Barney and Chief Simpson uh, also, and their people behind them, I uh, want to be high on our recognition. Okay. Uh, along that vein, we have a gentleman here today. We're here to honor. Uh, a 41-year employee of the village uh, who is retiring uh, for the second time, uh, <laughs> but we we hate to see him go, uh, Mr. Warren Powell. Uh, Mr. Powell, uh, I, I have a proclamation uh, that I'd like to read, and it relates to you and your service. And it, it's, it's suitable for framing, Warren. Uh, whereas the village of Mamaroneck, since its establishment on November 16, 1895, has been blessed with leaders who have dedicated themselves to improving and advancing the betterment of all. And whereas many of these leaders are well known, many others serve the village in less obvious, but equally important ways to enhance the quality of life in our friendly village. And whereas one of these individuals is Warren Powell, originally hired by the village as a sanitation driver in 1980, and retired as a full-time employee in 2019, after which he returned to working for the village on a part-time basis. And whereas Warren Powell is a sign of the Powell family, who has given so much to the residents of the village through their generational service with the Straight Gate Church, a ministry in which both his father and brother have served as spiritual leaders. And whereas Warren Powell has embraced his familial call to service as a 40 plus year member of the all volunteer village of Mamaroneck Fire Department, 
having served as lieutenant, commanding and leading the members of Volunteers Engine and Hose Company Number Two in their mission to protect the property and lives of the residents of the village of America. And whereas Warren Powell, recently retired from the village, although he is to be lauded for his 41 years of dedicated service, his colleagues will always remember they never treated them like co-workers, but rather as part of his extended family. Whether it be because of his ever-present smile and good words and humor, the baked goods that he would bring in to share with them, or the assistance he was always willing to provide, he will be sorely missed. Therefore, I, Mayor Thomas A. Murphy, on behalf of the residents of the village of Mamaronic, hereby express the great, deep gratitude and esteem with which Warren Powell is held by this community. And I personally thank him and his family on the occasion of his retirement of 41 years of dedicated service that he gave the village. I warrant this will be here for you in Village Hall. Sally will have it for you. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. You, you were always a pleasure to deal with in the, the years I've known you. Thank you, Tom. Anything you'd like to say, Mr. Powell? Uh, I'll just say thank you, everybody. Uh, enjoyed working with all of you. And the time you need me for anything, I'm still around. Thanks, Warren. Thank you, Warren. God bless you, family. family. Thanks, everything, pal. Thank you. Thanks, Warren. See you around. Thanks. Thank you, Warren. Hey. Okay. Have a good evening, Warren. Uh, the next up is a presentation from the Maronick Coalition, Coalition for Affordable Housing. Now, uh, I know we have Teresa Collier here from uh, the Westchester, or not the Westchester, I'm sorry, the Washington the Housing Alliance, and she is going to be uh, the lead off batter for the Maronick Coalition for Affordable Housing. Uh, Teresa, thank you for coming on tonight and to uh, all of your compatriots for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. And I would like to say this is just like the perfect opening based on what you said and, and, and talking about um, how the government's been running. So I am the Community Service Coordinator for Washingtonville Housing Alliance. I'm sure everybody on the screen is probably somewhat familiar with the organization. We're a nonprofit that really preserves and builds and maintains quality affordable housing for the community. Um, we have 40 units. We've been here for about 40 years in the community now. Um, and I think what has happened with us is that, you know, COVID sort of presented an opportunity for nonprofits and organizations and businesses and people in general to sort of take a seat um, to have a moment to pause and sort of reevaluate what their missions and values were. Washingtonville was no exception. We sort of took the COVID time to sort of see how we were moving and what we wanted to do. Knowing that we've been trying to really get a development project going, we know firsthand the need for affordable housing. Um, I think Westchester County did a, a, a a housing assessment needs. I think the data is there. It shows the need for more affordable housing. I don't think there's any one municipality that could say that they've done their fair share. Um, so with that being said, last year we sort of formed and started talking about all the nonprofits that had gotten together to sort of address the needs of the COVID challenges um, about really where some really significant, where we needed to sort of put our energies and our thoughts and our energy together collectively and address an issue And housing, of course, was a main sort of issue for all of us. So hence the Mamaronic Coalition for Affordable Housing was created and birthed. And it's really just an opportunity for us to come together. We're thankful to be here tonight to sort of start the conversations with the local officials on how communities can work best with government officials um, and get things done. Um, the flooding, unfortunately, sort of amplified the need for more affordable housing. And as everyone on the screen knows, the tremendous, tremendous efforts that this community came together to sort of address the needs was unprecedented. Like the resources and the love and the generosity were just, they were staggering. Um, and again, the need for housing is also so incredibly significant that we wanted to take the opportunity now to really start to have the conversations to move this forward. So what you're gonna to see tonight is just 
organizations and community members who all have various points of view to share with you to sort of get this conversation moving to the place where it's actionable and we can really start to, to build a, a better housing pool and to give opportunities for people to share their experiences. So again, I'm thankful for this opportunity. You will hear many, many different stories. Um, I don't know all the legalese on zoning and variances. There are people with the expertise who can address those issues. But for, as a community service advocate for, for coordinator for Washingtonville, I can tell you I get at least 90% of the calls that we get are housing related. Local people calling, <laughs> waiting to go on waiting lists that are years deep. Um, people who've been born here, people who have been here for a short period of time, who are just struggling to make ends meet and to be able to keep a roof over their heads. Um, so that's just sort of a, a very introductory um, little summary of, of why we're here. And we are just really excited to work together with all of you I and mean, move this conversation forward. Okay, you know what? So let me ask the folks who are in attendance who are from the uh, Mamarina Coalition for Affordable Housing, mm -hmm. if you could just raise your hand as the attendees and we'll call on you one at a time. Is that fair enough? Sounds like a great plan. Okay, hold on. Let me get to the top of the list. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you start at the top and just work your way down. Robert? There is a Robert that's been called upon. Robert? Robert, you have to unmute your mic. Okay, let's move on. We'll go back to Robert. Go to the next one. Tammy Burks. Good evening. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, Tammy, I can hear you. Excellent. Good evening. I'm the Reverend Tammy Burks, currently the interim rector of St. Thomas Episcopal Church and also a resident of the community for the past 23 years. Um, Mamaronek has come together in so many amazing ways, both in response to the challenges brought on by COVID and now in response to the overwhelming needs from the flooding. We've heard that from uh, Mayor Murphy this morning or uh, this evening. And it is now time, um, it's well past time in fact, for us to bring all of that passion, energy, creativity, the desire of people to help and to make a difference, our commitment to diversity, to create solutions so that our community can not just weather these storms, but can rebound and become a model of what a truly diverse and equitable society can look like. And at the base of that, I think has to be access to affordable housing. Um, as Teresa said, there are going to be many people here tonight who can and will speak to this issue with a far better understanding of the complexities and the challenges and the possibilities than I have. But as a faith leader in this community, I want to implore you to do whatever it takes to keep this issue front and center and to not rest until we have practical and implementable solutions. Teachers, business owners, healthcare workers, public service workers, laborers, seniors, young families, people who grow up in this community, everyone who makes up the amazing and diverse community that is Mamaronek should be able to have options for safe, affordable housing to live in the community in which they work. And that means dedicating resources and time and energy towards long-term affordable housing solutions. One of the basic premise promises that you make as a member of the Episcopal Church is that you will strive for justice and respect the dignity of every human being. We repeat that vow every time we baptize a baby or confirm a young adult. And I take it very seriously, not just as a priest, but as a member of this community. This isn't a new issue for us in our community or in the county or in our state or in a nation, but it is one that I have great confidence and faith, excuse the pun, that together we can and we must address it and become leaders of a vibrant, exciting and beloved community. Thank you. Uh, Tammy, I just want to uh, thank you and St. Thomas's for opening your doors during the emergency. Uh, you, you were, you know, uh, 
irreplaceable as a way to help our citizens who had lost everything get reclothed, restocked, uh, you know, put, put a little money in their pockets. Uh, you, you helped hundreds and hundreds of families. And, uh, you know, as a community, we're deeply in, indebted to St. Thomas's uh, for your you know, munificence and just the kindness that you show on a consistent basis. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. And uh, that was not us doing that alone, but with the Coalition for Community. And I want to add that we hope that we never have to open our doors for that ever again, because we hope that between attacking the flooding issues and attacking house, affordable housing issues, that we won't have to do that um, ever again. But uh, we stand ready to partner with the village in any way we can to move this forward. Thank you, Tim. Thank Next you, Bob. Is, uh, Margaret Calfer. Hi, good evening. Um, this is Meg Koifer. Um, I am both a new village of Mamaroneck resident, a very, very happy one, although I've lived in the Washmont Mamaroneck area now um, for well over a decade, I guess 15 years now. Um, I am really happy to speak to you tonight about um, my role. I, I have many hats in the community, but tonight I'm speaking also from the perspective of the Coalition for Understanding Racism Through Education, one of the members of the Coalition for Community, as well as um, representatives on um, Teresa's coalition. Um, I really wanted to speak to you passionately, as uh, Tammy has, to make sure that you consider all options available for supporting the creation of safe and affordable housing in our community. I think that we are, obviously we have seen, as already been said numerous times, the absolute unprecedented outpouring of care in wake of this crisis. And the question is, can we lead with the same level of excellence to create a path of affordable housing for the very people who have um, suffered disproportionately um, in this crisis? And that's really what we are hoping for and what we're asking of the village of Amaranek in your leadership is for us to have that same level of excellence around affordable housing that we've had in reacting to the crisis at hand. I think um, a term that is really, really important to understand is a term called ALICE, it's an acronym, and it stands for Asset Limited, Income Constrained, but Employed. And we have this ALICE resident, which is a United Way term, we have lots of ALICE residents in our Village of Amerinette community, as Tammy had mentioned, these can be teaching assistants, they might be nonprofit workers, elder care workers, landscapers, the people who are stocking our food shelves or serving us in restaurants, um, all services that we depend on and that we enjoy, who simply want to be able to have safe and affordable housing here in our community. There is absolutely no doubt that the Village of Amerinec has the capacity to lead on this. Um, as has been mentioned, there are experts from um, the various coalitions, in particular from West Hab, who can, you know, they know how to do this work. And they've been very, very clear that our village would be very positively looked upon for funding for this work because of the strength of our schools, because of the strength of our village leadership, because of the strength of our nonprofit support that we have. We really have the ability to lead and to make sure that all residents who are working active community members have a way to stay in this community. Personally, I've had the tremendous privilege to work alongside Emmanuel Rawlings. He's also a volunteer here in the community. His family has been here for generations. This is a history that is going to be lost um, because people like Manny who work in the nonprofit sector are not gonna be able to afford to live here. Gerandi Martinez herself, head of community resource center has had to make the difficult decision to move her home outside of this community. There, there simply are not enough options. And if we have the, the ability and the power right now to lead with excellence, to ensure the diversity and the beauty of this community now going into the future, but our decisions now will determine that. There's simply no doubt. And so I just implore upon the village to be incredibly innovative as you already have, not just in reaction, but in planning in order to provide the best for all residents and to maintain a diversity that brings all children into a better world in the future. 
Thank, thank you, Meg. Meg, uh, I, you know, I, I want to thank you, and uh, as Tammy pointed out, the whole coalition for community. But I, I especially, uh, I want to thank you for organizing uh, the courthouse. Uh, you and Manny uh, took took a first day uh, of chaos and turned it into progress the second day. And, and I want to thank you on a personal level for the many, many times I saw you uh, during the first 10, 11 days of the flood. And uh, you were a comfort to me, and it was nice to see your friendly face. And uh, it, it, it meant a lot to me that you were, you were omnipresent and, uh, and, and such a vigorous advocate for the people who had no other advocate. They had you and Manny. And uh, you know, thank you all for jumping in there. God bless you. Uh, the next up is Ms. Short. No, I'm sorry, I went out of order. Uh, Helen Rosenberg is well known in this community for her uh, advocacy of affordable housing. Hey, Helen, you're up. Helen? There we go. I was having trouble unmuting. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, I hadn't planned necessarily to say anything, but I just feel I have to add my voice. Um, I have been a resident with my husband in the village for just under 25 years. Um, during that time, I've served on the village planning board. I've been on other nonprofit boards such as Washingtonville Housing Alliance and the Friends of the Marinick Library. And I've met a wide range of people in this wonderful jewel of a community. Um, which is a jewel in part due to its diversity. And by diversity, I don't just mean um, racial diversity or ethnic diversity, but diversity of uh, income as well. Um, and uh, I am really worried that we are going to lose that diversity. Um, the, the, the damage that the flooding has caused obviously highlights it for everyone. But more and more people are finding that they cannot stay in this community, even though many of them grew up in this community, work in this community, contribute in ways such as, you know, working with our, our, our kids in schools, uh, working in our local restaurants, staffing our local institutions, helping our elders, et cetera. Um, and I just urge uh, each of the trustees to consider when the time comes that an actual housing development application is submitted to think about the asset that can be developed here and can be a jewel within a jewel because affordable housing does not have to be an eyesore. Affordable housing can be environmentally correct. It can be beautiful. It can be an asset to the streetscape and it can provide for our community. Uh, and I, I urge uh, all of you, when the time comes, if you haven't already, to tour some of the beautiful affordable housing developments that have been built in this county and see what kind of asset we can bring to Mamaroneck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Helen. Uh, Ms. Short, Hillary Short. Hi, my name is, um, can you hear me? Yes. My name is Hilary Short. I rent an apartment at 151 Fenimore Road in the village. When moving here four years ago to rent a decent one bedroom apartment in the village, I needed to prove I earned at least 65K per year and put five and, six and a half K down. 65K comes out to $32 per hour for a 40 hour week. Essential workers in our community are earning between 15 to 25 hours per week. Our residents deserve affordable housing to stay in our community and service the necessary needs for our community to function well. Nobody should be spending 70% of their income on rent and need to be fed by the government. The current system is failing our essential working residents when they live in substandard housing and can't get ahead in our community. If we build affording, affordable housing in our community, I believe the village will be more financially sustainable. Our workers will be able to use their extra income to feed their families. And for those currently unable to pay taxes on their incomes due to high rents, they can start paying into the tax system to work towards their retirement. With local affordable housing in place, our businesses 
and private homes will benefit from finding local workers. I urge you all to work towards a goal that every resident in our community can find affordable housing. Thank you, Ms. Shore. Gerandi Martinez. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Gerandi Martinez. I have the honor of leading the Community Resource Center with my team, and I know uh, Janet Rolon Fry, who's also on this call, is supporting us. We're a local nonprofit organization that works to empower and advocate for our local immigrant and low income community. We do this by helping them to become self sufficient and active members of Marinick and the larger community. We're also members of Marinick Coalition for Affordable Housing and the Coalition for Community. And we work with your local municipality to build a diverse social fabric that we're all proud to call the village of Marinick. In this village and county, the lack of accessible um, and affordable housing has led to low income workers and families having to live in basement apartments. We all saw that during the flood, people living in basement apartments and first floors that lost everything because they couldn't afford to live anywhere else. Even if they evacuated safely and it was a really close call, they now will, the affordability crisis and gentrification will mean that they'll probably have to move to another community and another basement apartment because they're, they're, it's just unaffordable anywhere else. And so they'll be equally vulnerable to flooding um, and or another uh, natural disaster. Just because we all know this, but I have to say it, these are communities that work our economy. They raise families, they start businesses, they become young professionals, they shop locally, eat locally, use our public transportation, and yet they have to either, if it's a generational family, they have to own homes in an unsafe and flood prone area, or they have to spend more than 50% of their take home pay on rent and housing. And Meg said, I, I am someone who grew up in Mamaronic. I've been so proud to be a Mamaronic resident for years. My mom came here when she was very young, pregnant with me and had her family here. She raised her family. She bought a home in the Flats community and raised me. And I became a contributing member of this society. Up until last year, I had to move because I couldn't afford to live in Mamaronic or to build a family here. And so if for nothing else, if we're not gonna think about the community that's working, our economy, that's raising families, that's building homes here and just you know, making our community more diverse and better for it, then, at, then I mean, this is terrible, but then think about the money we're losing, the talent we're losing when we can't keep Mamaronic affordable. It's killing me that I have to come to another place and spend my money somewhere else. And then I can't give that to a community where I grew up in for over 30 years. So Meg mentioned this, we, we, ha we have to invest in our community. We have to make it affordable and safe and a place where people want to grow up and raise their families. Now is the time to put our foot down together, make this a, an, a collective issue for everyone, for the severely rent burden, for the, for the young professionals, for the teachers, for the police, um, for nonprofit workers and, you know, Manny too, like every, we need everyone to stay in Mamaronic, but we can only do that if we fix the flood issue and we make um, Mamaronic affordable. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna, and thank you for everything you've done and will do and have done. Uh, Glory, welcome. Can you hear me now? Yes, Gloria. Oh, hello. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and the trustees, as well as Teresa. Um, I am a member of the Washingtonville Housing Alliance and also have been involved with the Marinette Coalition uh, for Affordable Housing. And I will say this. The day after the storm, uh, I, I'm grateful 
that all I had, all I lost was power for six days. But when I had to go to the office uh, th that Thursday, uh, because I had no electricity, when I came home that evening and turned onto North Barry Avenue, I cried. I literally cried because people's homes were on the street. They were, it was at the curb. And this to me was totally unnecessary. We have to fix the housing problem. We have to uh, have affordable housing for our residents in this community and safe housing. No one should live in the basement. No one should be uh, taken out of their home in a canoe. And Washingtonville has tried very hard to try to get something built within this community. I suggest that the mayor and the trustees on this call take a look at housing that has been built by West Ham. Go to Yonkers, take a look and see what they have done. Affordable for all the residents. No one should have to leave and no one should lose their home due to flooding. And that is a separate issue, I'm sure, Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. I thank you. I'm very emotional about it and very sorry for residents who have lost their homes. No, thank you, Ms. Welcome. You spoke right from the heart. It was great to hear you. Thank you. Right. Uh, Mr. Jemanski. Hello? Hi, Andrew. Hi, how are you? I'm good, sir. How are you? Good, good. Thanks very much for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, we, as a coalition, appreciate the opportunity to speak about affordable housing. My name is Andrew Jermansky. I'm the vice, senior vice president of real estate at West Tab and Washingtonville Housing Alliance. Um, specifically here to discuss Washingtonville tonight. Um, we have a 40 year history of improving the housing conditions of low and moderate income residents here in the village of McCarnick and undertaking other supportive activities designed to sustain communities that are culturally diverse, multi-generational and of mixed income. We currently own 40 apartment units in the village many of which were damaged badly in the recent hurricane. Um, the one that wasn't was the closest to the village court on Library Lane. Um, our board members all live and work here and have long family ties to the village. Um, I had an opportunity a couple years ago to speak before the board during the development moratorium. Um, at that point, I was talking about uh, increasing the need for more affordable housing in the village, um, a need that I think has really only increased as a result of, of the pandemic, which exacerbated the income inequality gap and Hurricane Ida, which disproportionately affected low-income households in the flats. Much to the board's credit at the time, um, our proposals were taken seriously and some important regulations in the zoning text were either maintained or amended uh, in an effort to support the construction of below market rate housing. Um, one of those was the parking requirements for, for all affordable buildings, which was very much appreciated. Um, currently, I think our commitment to building quality housing has only increased, and we spent a lot of time looking at sites throughout the village um, to be turned away by, you know, some private uh, property owners in, in various different areas, some affected by the 50-foot setback, um, a rule that still, you know, hasn't necessarily been changed. Um, but what we realized in speaking with other coalition members, speaking with elected officials, community members is there's a large sizable contingent of people in this village that actually care about affordable housing and want to see something get done. Um, and I think that's really why we're, we're here tonight. Um, specifically about affordable housing, a little bit about this, the housing needs assessment that was prepared by the Westchester County um, Department of Planning back in 2019 determined that approximately 11,000 uh, units uh, were needed of newly constructed housing. Um, with a specific emphasis on a need for extremely low income renters. Um, Westchester has the highest area median income percentage in the country at 117,000 uh, for a family of four. Um, and the same assessment noted that the village was home to a significant number of rent burden tenants 
severely overcrowded households and substandard housing. Um, we see that you know every day in the areas near where we have uh, where we own uh, units. Um, what we found is housing for families earning between thirty thousand and sixty five thousand, the families that typically kind of get housing through you know the the low income housing tax credit, uh, affordable housing programs are our shopkeepers, there are retail workers, municipal workers, parking attendants, teachers, um, a wide variety of people on kind of the lower income uh, threshold. Um, Westchester in general has a, has a real demographics problem. Um, its most growing cohort is older than 85. The age cohort of 30 to 44, which starts families and businesses throughout the county and, and here in the village is showing decline. And that's very much as a result of there being a lack of housing for families that are affordable. Um, there are always a, arguments against affordable housing. It pr will produce traffic. There isn't enough parking. It might overcrowd schools. It hurts the tax base. There isn't a way to pay for it. But these concerns really are anecdotal and they're not supported by data. Low-income tenants have fewer cars, um, a fact obviously that the board understood when it reduced the parking requirements for all affordable buildings. Mm -hmm. Multifamily rental buildings have fewer children living in them per unit than single family homes. Washingtonville's 40 housing units have a total of 17 children of varying, a varying ages, including infants. The number of children in our units adds less than one school age child per grade between elementary, middle and high schools. Uh, affordable housing buildings pay real estate taxes. They prevent blighted sites. Study after study shows that affordable housing increases nearby property values, creates economic spending, increases the tax base, and creates local jobs. Um, for anyone concerned with kind of the environmental impact of new development, uh, they should understand that the affordable housing developments produced and financed by New York State are typically the most energy efficient and self-sustaining buildings in the country. Our financing requires us to meet um, significant uh, energy savings, you know, close to 30, 35% above code. Um, and there are financial incentives um, from NYSERDA and other government agencies that assist us in doing better than that. Um, with the Con Ed gas moratorium currently in place, um, something occurring in Southern Westchester, but not many other locations, you know, in the Northeast, uh, we would be building an entirely electric, uh, building utilizing, you know, uh, electric heating and cooling systems, VRF systems, energy recovery units, renewable solar systems. Our buildings provide open green space. It's required by uh, by our code and and by our financing structures. Um, so in certain ways, we feel like the village could actually become the model for smart, sustainable design that fits in in the neighborhood that provides, you know, housing to low income people. Um, that then can just directly walk to work on Main Street and support all the businesses that are that are there. Um, you know, as someone else said, I think Teresa said, every day we turn away members of the village of Mamaroneck community to come into our office hoping for new housing opportunities. Um, we're at capacity. We have very little turnover um, and a very long waiting list. There is a real need for um, for affordable housing in the village. And clearly there's a contingent of people here who care about it enough to show up here tonight and talk about it, you know, passionately. And, um, you know, the virtues of providing our lowest income residents with housing stability is important. Um, and we just hope that the board of trustees will take the lead on this issue and support the lowest income people in our community, provide housing for them. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Phil and Diane Oldman. Uh, good evening and thank you. Uh, obviously, we're with the Large Farm of America Lions Club. Uh, just very simply, uh, many of the people on this call are members of the club, uh, and we have uh, members and leaders and, and interests from a variety of, uh, of, of needs of our community. And just very simply, I'm here to indicate that the housing problem is our club's number one focus and concern. So of all the various interests that I know the community has, and obviously, uh, Mayor, wherever you have, uh, this housing we have put at the top of our agenda, just to establish that point. And it's a matter of bringing resources and determining what they are. Thank you, Phil. Adrienne Smith. 
Good evening, everyone. My name is Andrine Smith. I'm a resident of the village, and I just wanted to echo my support for proposals to create more affordable housing in the village. Um, it, it was always something that I supported, um, although I, I, I must admit it was always on a theoretical basis, something that I felt was needed and necessary for our community. I personally was impacted by the flooding in the village. I live on Howard Avenue, one of the streets that was most impacted by the flooding, and I've been displaced by it. And just having to, to figure out next steps, it just adds an entirely different layer of stress for families like mine um, who have been living, I've lived there for six years in my home. And now I'm looking at having to replace the whole thing basically and rebuild it and looking for a, a short-term rental while that happens. And it's just simply unaffordable, just to be frank, um, which just means that while my home is being renovated, I won't be able to live where I'd like to live. I'm gonna to have to find somewhere else in the meantime, um, whether or not that takes six months or a year to repair the home. So I just wanted to echo and add my voice of support that this is something that's really important to the community and I would be fully behind efforts to add additional affordable housing where people can um, get to their jobs, get to school, get to where they need to be without extending their commute. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smith, and I'm very sorry for your loss. Uh, I remember seeing you at the courthouse uh, a couple of days after, and uh, I, you know you, you, your 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 bravery uh, was shining through. Uh, I wish you the best of luck. Whatever we can do for you, we'll do. Thank you, uh, Melissa Kaplan Macy. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, my name is Melissa Kaplan Macy, and I'm Vice President for State Programs for Regional Plan Association. Regional Plan Association is a research, planning, and advocacy organization that for nearly 100 years has been dedicated to developing and promoting ideas to improve the economic health, environmental resiliency, and quality of life of the tri-state metropolitan area. We have developed four once-in-a-generation long-range plans for the region, each addressing major issues of its time. Our fourth regional plan released in 2017 identified the housing affordability crisis as one of the central challenges facing our region today. But I'm not only a planner, I'm also a resident of the town of Mamaroneck and an active member of the Mamaroneck Coalition for Affordable Housing. Planning for the future of communities in Westchester and the region isn't just a day job for me, it's very personal. Like many of you, I'm fortunate enough to live in a single family home in a high opportunity school district where my kids have the quality of life that I think every parent wants for their children. Great schools with terrific teachers, good friends, safe walkable neighborhood, and a strong sense of community that we love. I'm also a divorced mom with two young boys, and I have to tell you that staying in the home that my ex-husband and I bought before our divorce isn't easy. Making the mortgage payment is nearly impossible, and without getting into the details, I can tell you it's not sustainable. But there aren't a lot of other options in the town or in the villages. Staying in the school district means that my kids not only can continue to get a great education, but it also means social and emotional stability amid all the disruptions they've had in their lives over the past several years and the emotional challenges that continue to struggle with as divorced kids. And I know I'm one of the lucky ones. I have a professional job with health insurance, and if I can't make it work to Sam Marinek, I know I'll land safely somewhere else. So many of our people in our community aren't so lucky. A few numbers from the recent Westchester County Housing Needs Assessment that I know many of you are familiar with, but I think are worth repeating. In the village of Mamaroneck, 54% of renters and 33% of owners are cost burdened. That means that they are now spending more than a third of their income on their housing. And a full third of renters in the village are severely cost burdened, meaning that they spend more than 50% of their income on rent. We're all in this together has been an oft repeated refrain throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, but it's really just an empty phrase when the grocery store workers, teachers, home health aides, delivery people, and other essential people to the well-being of our community do not have access to affordable homes in the community they serve. When we don't invest in homes for people of all incomes, we perpetuate the habit of excluding the local workforce, losing our young people, and forcing our seniors to move away from the community where they've spent their lives. Mamaroneck needs more homes for more people, not just for some. We need to recognize that it's not a zero-sum game. It's both and. Our community can be a great place to live and can also be more affordable. So what can we do? There's no silver bullet to addressing our housing affordability crisis. We need more housing and more places throughout the villages and the town but here are the two specific things we can do that are easier than you might think. Zone to allow multifamily apartments, particularly near transit, and also allow accessory units on single family lots. If we can do these things, we can create more affordable homes for more people in our community. 
Transit accessible apartments on surface parking lots designed to accommodate climate change is a real and real realistic opportunity. And accessory dwelling units on single family lots is an easy way to create more relatively affordable homes in the single family neighborhoods that comprise the majority of land in our community. This hidden housing is a very easy way to create more of what is often referred to as hidden housing within the context of our single family land use patterns. These ideas aren't radical. They're a baseline of best practices and planning that we should be adopting in our communities. As we continue to weather the pandemic, I applaud the Village of the Maranek Board of Trustees for having this conversation with the community and working to address the housing affordability crisis. Highlighted by the pandemic and highlighted again just weeks ago by the devastation of Hurricane Ida. Along with the other members of the Maranek Coalition for Affordable Housing, I look forward to the opportunity to continue this conversation and work together to make our community accessible to all the people who make it the great place that it is today and the place that I'm very lucky to call home. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, you know what? We're not going to call Glenn because this is just for this is a presentation of the Maranek Coalition for Affordable Housing. So we'll get Glenn in the, in the uh, communication to the board. Uh, go to J, JJ Jacobs. Oh, you got that? Yes, I'm trying. I think I did it. Mr. Jacobs? Oh, Mr. Jacobs. Oh, hi. Uh, you're on mute. You're on mute. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Murphy and trustees. Um, my name is Jennifer Jacobs Guzman. I'm a resident in the village. I'm also an urban planner. Um, I'm on the board of the Washingtonville Housing Alliance and a member of the both the Mamaroneck Coalition for Affordable Housing and a member of the Mamaroneck Avenue School community. Um, I'm here tonight just to voice my support for creating more opportunities for both preserving the existing affordable housing stock that we have in Mamaroneck as well as creating more opportunities uh, for affordable housing in the village. Um, Mamaroneck has seen over the past few years a, a lot of high-end market rate and luxury housing options um, come online, but uh, this is not accessible to most Mamaroneck families. Um, you know, we know that over half of Mamaroneck renters are paying more than 30% of their income on rent, right, considered uh, rent burdened, um, as well as 38% of our homeowners are also cost burdened, so they're spending more than 30% of their income on their mortgage. Um, and as we've seen with the recent flooding, this doesn't leave most families with enough savings then to support them when something terrible um, happens. Um, affordable and income restricted housing is just a basic piece of infrastructure that we feel is more important now than ever. Um, I'm confident that uh, we can find ways to create affordable housing in Mamaroneck that's both accessible to working and middle class families as well as beautifully designed, sustainable and resilient uh, and something that we all feel proud of. So I just wanna thank you for taking time to address this really important issue tonight um, and I appreciate the time. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Francis uh, McDowell. Hello, all. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hi, uh, I'm Frances McDowell. I'm 17. I'm a student at Maranek High School, uh, and I've had the privilege of working with the CRC on eviction prevention in Maranek, uh, trying to address a problem that's adjacent to what we're discussing here tonight. Um, I originally intended to come on this call and just let you know that I think safe, affordable housing is a human right, one that you should all work really hard to ensure for the people you serve. Uh, but I was struck after hearing that Durani Martinez does not currently live in, Mar in Mamaroneck. Uh, it's devastating for me to know that the same people that have provided me and my classmates a real window into this community are the ones being shut out of it. Uh, our community <coughs> people like the staff at the CRC and our community should be accessible to people like the staff at the CRC. Uh, and the same goes for our community members that utilize the CRC's services. Um, so thank you for your time tonight to address this issue. Um, and I think it's really important. Okay, the uh, last that we'll have is PGRC. Uh, 
I'm sorry. This is Leilani. I, is read. A- I forgot that I was under my um, jobs uh, Zoom account. But I am a um, lifelong resident of Mermernic and um, I am not a part of the coalition uh, for affordable, affordable housing, although I did just sign up, sent an email saying that I would like to join the next meeting. But I want, I, I, it is very sad that even myself, I'm closer to 40 now that I had to live outside of Mermanic, although I've always wanted to be in Mermanic. My family's been in Mermanic for generations and that I had to live outside of Mermanic just to be able to afford, um, afford to live somewhere. But thank God that my, uh, my husband and I are able to live in the village of Mermanic present day. Um, we are renting, we, are, we don't own, but we do hope to own in the next few years, but it's also looking like we have to look outside of Mermanic to find a decent home. I am, I mean, the flooding issue is a, a totally different beast um, that I won't go into today, but the, my question to our local officials those who have been serving for years, those who are new to this term. My question to you when it comes down to zoning is who are you, who are you serving and who do you want in Romantic? Because everybody's comments about needing affordable housing, this is not a new issue. It's been around for ages along with, I mean, we can go into um, the cost of living, but affordable housing has been an issue for a while. So when you're allowing these high, these high end apartments or high end condos or houses to be built in Mermanic, who are you serving? It's just point blank. You have to answer to the people at some point. Who are you serving? And that goes for all municipalities. When we, when we are creating programs, when we're creating things within our village, within our town, whatever, our whole school district, because there is three municipalities in one school district or two, technically, <laughs> who are you serving? So think about that when you, when you start creating and you start putting things into place. And that's all I have to say. Y'all have a blessed evening. Thank you very much. All right, let's go to Glenn, because uh, where we go? Okay. Glenn? Good evening, board. Uh, I spoke to you about this when you were originally putting in your zoning laws. The uh, comments are very nice, but let's get down to the nitty gritty. Mamardic has to lift its restrictions on where you can build. You can't have a moratorium on Boston Post Road and restrict building in the village to Mamernick Avenue, the Flats and Halstead Avenue. You have two of them, uh, you have two family houses in one family zones that at this point, the zoning laws do not let them modify their houses in any way, shape or form to fit the people. You don't, you're not allowed to have accessory housing. We have limits with the type of um, renting uh, your uh, third uh, floor apartment in single families. Have to modify and make it easier for tenants to rent those houses. You put in height limits on buildings in the, um, in the uh, Washingtonville area and you have uh, additional setbacks you put in. If you want people to raise the homes out of the flood zone, you're gonna have to greatly modify height restrictions and setbacks in order to let people lift their homes out of the flood zone so you don't have any basement apartments. The apartments start at the second floor. But if you're not allowed to raise your house and you still have the same height restrictions, what you're gonna cause people is you raise the house, but you lose a third of your living space. That limits the size of the family that can live in these types of homes. Uh, density, many, many apartments, that way you have um, uh, 
some apartments that are smaller one bedroom apartments for people just starting out that can be less expensive units. And then you can uh, build up with uh, more height and you can have market at the top and affordable towards the bottom. But right now, the way that you have everything zoned, none of this can happen. You're going to have to get together with the coalition and seriously go over how all the zoning laws that have you put in. I says, I understand you were trying to restrict overdevelopment, but at the same time, you threw the baby out with the bathwater and now nobody can come in and buy multi, build multifamily affordable units because the restrictions that you put in make it prohibitive financially. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next up is uh, Diana Lovett. And then Jim, and then we'll, we'll, we'll end this. Hi, Diana. Hi, Mayor Murphy. Can you hear me? Yes, Diana, I can. Okay. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity and a big thank you to you and all of the trustees for all of the late nights and early mornings and um, hard work that went into um, really rolling up your sleeves and serving, um, you know, residents. I'm a member of the, the Marinette Coalition for Affordable Housing. And I've seen, you know, all of you work so hard in the past um, weeks um, to serve residents. And I just wanted to paint a vision for you guys um, to imagine what it would look like to not have Tom on the news talking about flooding, but to have all of you, Dan and Nora, Kelly, Tom and Victor standing up there in front of a beautiful new construction with your giant scissors and cutting a ribbon in a state of the art, modern, environmentally friendly facility that supports diverse members of our community to stay within our community. So as Leilani talked about, as Durandi talked about, we're so privileged. We have these amazing people all coming together to form this coalition. We have West Hab and their excellence in building. We have Jen and Melissa who are urban planners, Teresa, Durandi, all these people who serve the community. We're ready to do this and we really just need your approval and let's make it your vision. Let's have that glorious moment for you and for the community. And let's make it, a, let's get it on the news for something amazing. And we have all of the capability and resources to do that. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Diana. Uh, Jim, you're the last speaker. Could you, let's just, you know, hit the high notes, Jim, hit the high notes. Hi, everybody. Jim Kaloran um, with the Fuller Center for Housing. And if anyone needs help, 406 3357. Um, I take a little different viewpoint and I'm honored to be with everybody. First of all, thank you all for working with me. Some of the speakers I've been in the house helping to rehab. Um, this is a critical catastrophic time. And I, I uh, think anytime I, I am with you guys, it's an honor. Uh, and the, the flooding is a historic issue that goes way, 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 way back before all of you were born. Um, I'm not a big one for high rises. Uh, I'm looking at 44 of them outside my office right now that um, the, the beauty of the village is that it is a village and you have um, kept it at a certain level. I'm all, we're all about ownership, interest free and no down payment. The demographic about 30 to 44 about people leaving New York is because they can own in other states. And we're really not making any ownership for anybody, including all of your kids. So I'm, I'm kind of, uh, and that's with the utmost respect to everyone that is on this coalition. My concern is saving the existing housing right now. Uh, and it's really uh, a scary thought. And for the people who have, I did it in 2007. Uh, this is my third rodeo of rehabbing the floods in the village. Uh, we, the, the houses we built in 2008 did not get flooded. If you wanna see a, a beautiful model, on Howard and Nostrand. And I took what I learned here and brought 12,000 volunteers to Hurricane Sandy, where we also lifted up houses out there. I brought engineers of my team. And I think we need to have a, a re-envisioning of, of the village that will have decent housing for all. But uh, ownership is what keeps that middle group here. And also I, I'm a big fan of accessory dwelling units, which the coalition has said as well. Uh, but um, the first house we ever built was on Laurel and Weaver, a small, tiny house. And we're also are building passive homes, which save 80% utilities. 
for the families, which are all done in Europe because we like to drink oil and energy every day, all, all the time, every hour. I hate Zoom. I love real public hearing meetings. I was at seven o'clock at the village thinking that you'd be talking about some of the other important issues in regards to how we work together on the flood. I've been honored to be in those meetings. Uh, and if I can help with anyone on the coalition uh, and uh, where we moved our command center to Jefferson uh, extension parking lot uh, at Station Plaza. And I dream of that parking lot and about 20 other parking lots being ripped up in the village uh, and letting the water flow again like they did with the DMB in the Sawmill River in Yonkers because you cannot beat this uh, water. The only thing I would say is uh, Mamaritic gets dumped on literally and figuratively. I went in the river Saturday. Anyone wants to do that with me, please do. But I'm a big one for saying the Westchester Reservoir has to be clean. Uh, you know that, and I don't know if that's it. But anyway, 406-3357, thank you. And uh, we're all in this fight together, everyone in the coalition, all you trustees, and it's an honor, and the faith community. And uh, we're a faith-based ministry that believes everyone should have a simple, decent home to live on, on, on terms they can afford to live in. Thank um, you. Yep, God bless. Bye-bye. Uh, thank you to everybody from the American Coalition uh, for Affordable Housing for bringing this vital issue uh, to the future of the village uh, to the forefront. Uh, I, I just really quickly, I grew up in affordable housing. I grew up in a mutual redevelopment houses uh, on in Chelsea. Uh, if you go to look at those houses now, I, I moved into there when I, well, my parents moved into there when I was one year old. Uh, 59 years later, if you look at those buildings, they're, they're truly better kept and better in appearance than when we moved in. Uh, it has grown into a beautiful community. It, it's, it's a Mitchell Lama cooperative uh, that's uh, income based. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a definitely a model on what this community can do. Uh, you know, I think we have to not put uh, you know, to be blunt, we have to stop the practice of putting poor people in the flood zone. Uh, we, we need to start building these uh, affordable housing units outside of the flood zone. Uh, you know, I mean, that where I grew up was a, a way that a sanitation worker could raise four kids uh, in a two bedroom apartment. Uh, it was a little uh, cramped, but uh, you know, three of those kids went on to get PhDs and one of them went on to be a mayor. Uh, so not bad for a sanitation worker, but he, he was able to do it because he had safe, affordable housing. Uh, so I, I'm in this uh, to the end. Uh, this is something that's near and dear to my heart. When we were doing PLLC, uh, my, my goal was constantly to protect uh, the ability to build all affordable units. Uh, I think that this is what the future uh, of the uh, this community will be. We can't just talk about diversity. We always talk about honoring our diversity. And uh, it's nice to honor our diversity, but if you don't take tangible steps to make sure it survives, then it's just lip service. So I'm really grateful to the coalition. I expect good things to come out of this. Uh, the, the volunteer uh, energy in this community is just incredible. It's, it's life saving, it's life affirming, and it's incredible. And uh, I just want to thank them for everything they did for us during the storm and everything they did tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and the rest of the, the Board of Trustees for having us tonight to allow us to, a few moments to share some passion and energies. We look forward to working with the trustees um, and just positivity moving forward. Let's just take all this energy and make it really actionable and, and do something really responsible um, and leave a really great legacy for all of the children that come after us. So we'll be in touch and take care. Thanks again. Good evening, Teresa. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to, with the board's indul indulgence, uh, skip to 4A so that we could let uh, Chief DeRuza, uh go home because uh, she has to get up early in the morning to come to work. Uh, so, so 4A is new business resolution by the Board of Police Commissioners appointing a chief to the Village of Mamaroneck Police Department. So the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to make a motion that we, we convene as a Board of Police Commissioners. I'll second. All in favor. Aye. Okay, now let me go to resolution. For A, uh, 
Okay, just, you know, we, we pointed uh, Chief DeRuza provisionally uh, because there was not a civil service test at the time for a police commissioner, a police uh, chief in the village of Mamaronic. Uh, in that interim period, I believe, uh, and my dealings with her and watching her and watching the community deal with her, that she has served in an exemplary fashion. Uh, she has been uh, open. She has been uh, you know, uh, accessible. Uh, she has been communicative and she has uh, worked hard to advance new programs in this community. And I believe personally that we're very, very fortunate to have someone of her caliber. Uh, you know, she had a good mentor in uh, Police Chief uh, Leahy, who I was very fond of also. Uh, but you know, uh, Sandy, thank you for everything you've done and uh, you have earned this here today. Uh, so let me read the resolution. Whereas the Village Board of Trustees acting in their capacity as the Board of Police Commissioners appointed Sandra DeRuza uh, to the position of Chief of Police on a provisional basis effective November 30th, 2020, until such time that a civil service list was held and a new list developed. And whereas such a civil service list was, such a civil service exam was held on March 21st, but on March 2021, and a new list was developed and recently delivered to the Village of America. Now, therefore, be resolved that pursuant to the New York State Village Law, the Village Board acting in their capacity of police commissioner hereby appoints Sandra DeRuza to the position of police chief of police to the Village of America, subject to applicable New York State law and wishes the county civil service rules and regulations. Uh, I just want to point out it's not in the resolution, but that Sandy got the highest score. Uh, re resolved that the village manager is herein authorized to undertake such administrative acts as may be required to effectuate this appointment. And I will gladly make a uh, resolution. Second. Augustino. Trustees Winship. So happily, so easily. Yes, yes, yes. Trustee Natchez. Yes. Trustee Lucas. With pleasure. Trustee Tafor? Yes, thank you. Mayor Murphy? Yes. Go with God. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. much. Stay thank with you. Us. <laughs> Have a good night, Sarah. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome, Sarah. Thank you for everything you've Actually, done. Of course. I missed everything. Thank I, did. I appreciate it. Thank all you. All, uh, all right. The next item up is communication to the board. Just a tip it. Good evening. Uh, I hope uh, Chief DeRuza has a uh, refrigerator over at the uh, police station. She can put her uh, report card on, uh, her test score on. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. It well, well you, deserved. Appreciate that. Uh, I'd also like to uh, give my congratulations to Warren. I've known him a long time in the village. He's one of the real friendly faces that you would see. And I look forward, hopefully, to keep seeing him uh, around the village as he travels. Um, to the coalition uh, for housing, I hope they go and make the same presentation to the village of Largemont and town of Mamaroneck and start to get them involved. It shouldn't always fall on the village of Mamaroneck to worry about affordable housing. Uh, during your work session, you were uh, speaking about dealing with the 50 foot setback. And I think what the housing just told you, uh, let you know that this is a priority. You can't wait six months for people who have been totally flooded out to have to figure out what, what changes you're going to be making to the zoning with the 50 foot setback because that means they can't even start to design and plan what changes they have to make for their properties that are destroyed on the rivers until your decision is made. Or else what they're gonna do is they'll just put them back into the state they were in previously. If you're really looking for some of these people to upgrade the properties, uh, hopefully get at least a little bit out of the flood zone, they have to be able to go to planning and have to be able to present something and for somebody to have to sit on their property for six months before a decision is even made of what they can even go to planning with, that, that is definitely a hardship. I do wanna thank uh, everybody with their 
outstanding hard work. You guys were out there morning, noon, and night. It says absolutely terrific. And then I did see that the Hillside Bridge started. I asked if they were going to name the bridge after the governor. And one of the people over there said, no, I think we're going to name it after Dan Cernoff because he did all the work. So with that, I will speak to you later. Bye. Thank you. Well, have a good evening. <laughs> all right. I don't see anybody else's hand up. Uh, the next up is public hearing. Uh, resolution scheduling public hearing. Bill F, the village tree law. Okay. Uh, so let me get this. One A. All right, I need a motion to open the public hearing on PLF. So moved. I'll second. Or oh, oh, you call roll, please. Trustee Ventra? Yes. Anton? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, okay. Uh, just to begin, uh, Mr. Sposino? I don't see him. Oh, there he comes. Uh, do you, could you give us just an outline, uh, an outline of the law before we get the discussion started? Wow, that's a tall task. Um, there's, whole, there's a lot in this law. Uh, the first thing it does is it replaces the current uh, tree law in the village of Mamaron. Okay, so it's a complete redo of the tree law. Okay. The second thing, I'm just getting a copy of it here so I don't miss anything. Um, what it does is it establishes it, well, it continues the tree committee, which will have uh, a role to make recommendations, not only to the board of trustees, but to uh, the other village boards regarding, and particularly the land use boards regarding uh, tree related matters, okay? It will, uh, Article 3 protects trees on public property. Uh, much of this was in the existing tree law. Uh, there's a couple of new sort of uh, uh, re-engineered provisions that basically do a lot of the same things to protect trees. Um, it provides for uh, standards for planting trees on public property when someone wants to plant trees on public property uh, and uh, leaves that up to the village manager or the village manager's designee, but establishes uh, ANSI A300 standards, which are the industry standards for tree planting. Um, with respect to trees on public property, it requires private property owners as they are now required to prune their trees so they're not overhanging streets and sidewalks and so forth and remove dangerous trees. It um, authorizes the village manager to require uh, residents to remove unsafe trees. Um, and uh, it limits the removal of trees on private property so that no person may engage in clear cutting on a lot that's that's uh, not developed. And I'm, let me get the definition of clear cutting for you so everyone understands that. Clear cutting needs the removal of 30% or more of the healthy trees, eight inches or more in diameter uh, from any property over a five year period. So that is prohibited under this law. Um, let me go back down here. It prohibits the removal of protected trees and a protected tree, because a lot of this is in the definitions. A protected, protected tree is a tree with a, with a DBH. DBH means diameter of breast height of eight inches or more uh, anywhere on the property. A DBH of three inches or more in a wetland or steep, steep slope, or a tree that has been uh, designated to be protected on a site plan or a significant tree, which is a tree that has been certified as having historic or unique value because of its unique or noteworthy characteristics or intrinsic value. 
including things like species, age, location, historical significance, ecological value, et cetera, okay? Those kinds of trees can't be removed. Um, unless they are within 10 feet of a building or the tree is dead or substantially diseased or the protected tree interferes with a permitted use of the property and or is specifically identified for removal in an approved wetland permit, special permit, subdivision plat site plan or the landscape plan. So what a lot of this is designed to do is work with the, the land use boards and the decisions that they make with regard to trees as they're doing site plan, wet plan permits, special permits, et cetera, okay? Um, he, the building inspector can't grant the permit. And I apologize for the length of this, but there's a lot to this law. The building inspector may not grant the permit to remove a protected tree on private property if the owner seeks to remove more than three protected trees. They're limited to removing three protected trees within 36 months or the tree is in a wetland area and more than two trees have been removed. Um, as I said, no uh, permits required where there's a site, a tree preservation plan approved in accordance with a site plan that permits the removal of the trees. Uh, in a new provision, this law prohibits the removal of a tree while an application for site development plan approval or subdivision plan approval for the property is pending. So a, a, a developer can't come in and cut down all the trees before site plan approval is granted uh, or cut down any trees before site plan approval is granted. Um, the whole process for the approval of permits to cut down trees there are requirements for the restoration, uh, the replanting of trees that are taken down. Uh, and there are enforcement provisions so that the removal of a tree without a permit is a violation subject to a fine of not less than $1,050 or more than $5,000 for the removal of one or two trees and not less than $1,500 or more than $7,500 for each additional tree. Um, the fines, however, will be used for the purpose of preserving trees, minimizing damage and, to, and removal of trees, and increasing the tree capacity. Oh, so the, the money does not go into the general fund, except, you know, technically it goes into the general fund, but it's to be used, it's designated to be used for trees. Um, there's, uh, let's see, there is, there are other provisions in this law that I haven't mentioned. I would have been here all night trying to read it. The, the, the law is 12 pages long, uh, but I think those are the highlights, Mayor. But that's what I like. You hit, you hit the high notes. Uh, I'm going to go to the public, uh, Mr. Teeker. Yes. Good evening. Thank you. Um, I had some comments, some substantive, some just opinion. Um, I think Mr. Spalzino is right. This law has a lot in it. Um, I think it may have too much in it. Um, but I will start on with the definition of clear cutting. So there's no specific penalty for if you clear cut, correct? I read the law. All the penalties are just based on how many trees you remove. Is that correct? Please continue with your comments. Okay. Um, so essentially, if there's an additional penalty, since nobody will answer a question about the law, which seems pretty odd in a public hearing, mm -hmm. Um, if there is an extra penalty for that, then any person removing one tree from his property, if he only has three trees, is guilty of clear cut. Um, the next definition is dangerous tree. 
It reads, a dead or diseased tree, which constitutes a hazard to life or property. All dangerous trees are not dead or diseased. You have trees that have structural cracks in them. You have trees that are hit by lightning, which are arguably alive. So I'm not sure why you wouldn't just say a tree which constitutes a hazard to life or property instead of limiting it. Um, the definition of, let me just say I was in the tree business for 20 years of my life, um, ran a licensed tree company in Connecticut. The idea that you could pin in three years the death of a tree on things like severing a tree, the tree's roots or engaging in destructive pruning practices is not really reasonable. I don't think anybody would ever not be able to defend against that. Um, And since nobody wants to explain, I know this, this has been through 20 drafts, so I would hope there could be some kind of discussion. Um, page three, top of the page, a tree with a DBH of three inches um, located in the wetlands or adjacent wetlands um, can't, let's see, I'm sorry, that's a protected tree. Does that mean that somebody could remove every tree in a wetland that's less than three inches? And maybe some of the environmental people on the board would know whether there are protections for vegetation in general in a wetland. Um, but if there are, I'm not sure you want to contradict it with this. Um, significant tree or shrub halfway down the page. Last sentence reads, no later than August 1st, 2021, the village manager will cause to be prepared a list of significant trees. That's a fairly high bar. Um, I'm not sure why that needs to be in a law. The tree committee has talked about a significant tree list for a decade. Um, this could be created at any time. I don't think you need to encase it in law. Um, the next definition, street tree, is defined as a tree located within the village right-of-way. I'm not sure why you just wouldn't define pub public tree, because the right-of-way generally applies to the area on the side of a street. And we have a lot of other property other than right of way where we wanna protect trees. Um, this is just a comment, article two, um, 318-4, a tree committee must study, investigate, review, develop, and update annually, administrate a written plan presented annually to the Board of Trustees for the care, preservation, pruning, planting and replanting and removal or disposition of trees and shrubs in parks along streets and in other public areas. Again, it's not just right of ways, but more importantly, I hope the board will encourage the tree committee to do this. I don't think during their existence they've ever done that. And that's always been a part of 318, which is the tree code as it exists. Um, number seven under duties and responsibilities, it reads the tree committee must advise village boards, committees, and departments on tree related matters. I'm not sure if that should have tagged upon request on it. I think that's what the old law has. I don't think you want to make the tree committee review um, related, related matters automatically. Um, the last item, 11, 
is review any proposal by the village manager or the village manager's designee to remove a tree on public property. Does that mean that the tree committee will, prior to trees being removed, will be told when trees are being removed? No one knows the answer to that question? Um, I think this is of concern. Is this, if it's mandatory, I think it's a very good thing. I mean, please remember that a year and a half ago, the 18 trees, native healthy trees were removed from Harbor Island Park without anybody knowing. Um, so I do believe you need some kind of control and that would probably be a good one. Article three, trees on public property. Um, a reads, no person, including a person employed by or acting on behalf of public utility May number six is pass any public service utility wire through the branches of a tree on public property without sufficient insulation to prevent damage to the tree. Again, seems like an incredibly high bar. Are we really gonna enforce that? No wires through trees? We're gonna to have to bury lines if that's the case. Um, B reads, no person including any person or entity engaged by any person to treat any tree on public property may treat a tree on public property without the permission of the village manager or the village manager's designee. I think all that's covered in A and I'm not sure why, if that holds some other meeting than A, but it might want to be removed just for efficiency. Um, 318.6 on page six, um, planting trees on public property. B reads, the village manager or the village manager's designee may accept monetary donations for the planting of non-invasive trees on the list of suggested tree species established by the tree committee. I don't believe the tree committee puts invasive trees on their list. So I would suggest just for clarity, striking non-invasive. Um, the last sentence in that section says, the tree committee may not authorize the planting of trees that are not on the list of selected street street trees. I think that's foolish. I mean, if we're gonna have a tree committee that um, is basically our citizen group of tree experts, and I don't think they would argue that the tree list the village has is by any way um, a complete list. So I'm not sure why you'd want to limit somebody from planting a tree that was totally appropriate, that might not happen to be on the list. Are you done? No, I'm not. Um, page seven, D, 
it reads um, any tree damaged or removed without permission during its construction or the development of any property must be replaced in kind. Um, the law defines injured. It doesn't define damaged. So I would think for just consistency, you'd want to use injured instead of damaged. Um, Three eighteen eight removal of trees on private property. Um, prohibitions A number two reads: a person may without a person may without a permit issued by the building inspector either per. I'm sorry, no person may without a permit issued by the building inspector either purposefully or negligently remove or injure any tree exceeding eight inches in diameter at four feet measured off the ground. I think the language is confusing again. You've defined a standard for measuring trees as being four and a half feet off the ground, um, as being the DBH. Um, you have defined trees exceeding eight inches as protected trees. So I'm not sure why it just wouldn't say remove or injure any protected tree over four feet measured at DBH. Um, and that's it. I um, am pretty much agnostic on this law. I don't think our building department is in any kind of condition to add this to their enforcement, which appears to be quite complicated and heavily permitted. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next up is Mr. Freeman. I got it. Uh, David, unmute yourself. I've unmuted myself. Uh, hi, sir. Good evening, Mayor Murphy and, and the other trustees. My name is David Freeman. I'm a member of the Committee for the Environment uh, professionally, I'm an environmental lawyer. I've practiced environmental law for more than 40 years. This tree ordinance is long overdue. And, and one thing that Mr. Spelzino didn't say, but because he wasn't asked the question, is it is very comparable to the ordinances that have been passed by almost all of our surrounding communities. We are not, by any stretch of the imagination, um, out front on this. In fact, we are behind the curve. Uh, the town of Maranek has passed a tree ordinance, the town of Rye, the town of Rye Brook, the town of Harris, and the town of Scarsdale, the town of Greenberg. And although I wasn't involved with drafting uh, these provisions, my understanding is that they were borrowed from liberally from the provisions in other communities. So the fly specking that the prior speaker mentioned, I mean, these, these issues have been addressed and, and looked at, and it seems that other communities surrounding us have been able to implement uh, these provisions without, undue, um, without unduly agonizing over them. Um, it's also clear, and, and in fact, uh, when the Committee for the Environment which at its last meeting considered this ordinance and unanimously recommended its passage. Uh, when we, cons were, were, we were reviewed the ordinance, we had a chart, I'm not sure you, the members of the, the board have it available, which compared um, the ordinance, the, this ordinance to other ordinances passed by comparable communities. It's very similar, uh, has very, very much the same set of provisions. The tree canopy in our village is way lower than the average in Westchester, which may stand to reason because some of the communities in northern Westchester are clearly more rural, but the tree canopy of the village covers only 23% and change of our land area. The average for Westchester is more than double that. So we are, again, behind the curve in terms of having a tree canopy. 
And it's obvious as a, to me as an environmental lawyer, but also I think it's intuitively obvious that trees provide an important environmental benefit. They absorb carbon dioxide and, um, and they help retain uh, the help, help the soil retain water, which our recent experience with Hurricane Ida makes it clear that it's something that we really need in this community. Um, I, I think, and, and the Committee for the Environment thinks that the, this proposed law is a thoughtful synthesis of the provisions uh, of other uh, laws of other comparable communities. It strikes the right balance between preserving um, the environment and not unduly interfering with private property rights. The committee, uh, uh, as I said, unanimously voted to recommend its adoption. I personally enthusiastically support it uh, and urge its passions. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Uh, Devin Plack, uh, De yeah. I'll unmute you. You got that okay? Yep. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Hi, uh, actually, my name is Deborah Plock. I didn't understand what you wanted when you asked for screen name. Um, but at any rate, uh, my husband, Alan Diner, and I are here and very much have noticed the decimation of trees in the Maranek over the past few years. Um, they've been chopped down, um, sadly, on many private property um, places. And I'm concerned that the enforcement seems not to have much teeth in it. The kinds of houses that have been erected where they've chopped down trees rather mercilessly are million, multi-million dollar houses. Uh, throwing a few thousand dollars for clear cutting or doing more tree destruction prior to the development strikes me as uh, what they would consider a very simple extra expense to their building. Um, so that's basically what I think I, I have to say. And thank, thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Beth. Uh, the next up is a phone number, <clears throat> pardon me, 914-381-2516. Uh, uh, Good evening, Mayor Murphy and Board of Trustees. It's Doreen Roney. Hi, Doreen. I wish you didn't put my name out there for the public, but you just did. However, just um, I was a little, <laughs> a little just... taken back because on your agenda, it seems like this hearing is scheduled on your agenda for the 25th of October. Um, that's the date that the public hearing is uh, slated for. But I'm glad I was watching, and I'll say what I have to say about the tree law and um, what we have going in the village, because uh, it's a good idea to preserve trees and all vegetation. But um, I was concerned if the current staff has the time to devote to this one code, or is additional staff necessary? Is that being contemplated in that? No answer. Um, it would be great to quantify or obtain or provide information before considering adopting this tree law to see what time it will take to enforce it. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is as far as um, Seeker is concerned, which I didn't hear too much about tonight, it, Seeker requires you to explore reasonable alternatives in achieving the same goal for the action. Well, there's already... Um, codified in our code, and it's easily accomplished in our zoning code, but all it takes is enforcing our existing zoning code. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. It's not only the trees, but also all vegetation that provides for habitat decreases impacts to land and water resources. The definition of vegetation in the relevant section of the current zoning code is broad. It includes trees. Please also note that in 342.75 of the Village Code, it's not only uses, but actions that the Planning Board has to review applications on. And when it comes to the kind of destruction that we've seen of people buying a priest's property and then clear-cutting it, 
specifically, it says in Section C that aside from a set size of a half an acre of property, which applies to the planning board, it's any land involving 25% or more of the site when it comes to removing um, vegetation. So the code as it reads talks about the definition is vegetation. It's 342-3, and the definition is vegetation. I'll send it to you as soon as I'm, I'm finished speaking so you have it, which is any and all plants or plant life with trunks or stems exceeding six inches in diameter and three feet in height as measured from the ground. So it's not only trees, it's all vegetation. So site development plan approval by the planning board shall be required in all zoning districts for any proposed clearing of vegetation or earthwork on any property a half an acre or larger or any land involving 25% or more of the site. And in 342.87 are the penalties for the offense. So it says any owner who clears vegetation or performs earthwork in violation of 342.75C, which is what I just read, of this chapter shall be guilty of an offense punishable by a fine not to exceed $250 for each square yard of property cleared. So if a village code enforcement officer issues a notice of violation under this code, if you clear cut a 50 by 100 foot lot, for example, that's 555 square yards at $250 a square yard, and the village will have had $138,000 in its pocket for one person clear cutting a 50 by 100 foot property. If code enforcement takes the requisite action, it protects land, water resources, and land, brings revenue stream into the village, it will set an example for future offenders, and potentially stops this unabated, long-standing trend of property owners clear-cutting and removing trees without obtaining site development plan approval first. And as I said before, two things. I don't know what it's going to take for the staff you know, what type of manpower you need for the staff to enforce this. That's number one. But two, speaker requires you to explore reasonable alternatives in achieving, achieving the same goal for the action. What we have in code now is more stringent than what's being proposed. I thank you for your time, and I'll send you the code. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Claire Wolkoff. Oh, you got that? Hi, I'm, I'm Claire Walkoff. I live at 890 Pirates Cove, which is directly across Orienta Avenue from 988 Orienta Avenue, which was totally clear cut, and I mean 100% clear cut by um, the developers this summer. So a lot of my thoughts on this come from that, as well as from a personal point of view, over the years, we have had a number of trees fall as a result of storm damage. So when I look at the law, I look at it from that point of view. I'm not gonna go into any details here. I sent additional comments to you today. I think the, the main point is we need something on the books now. We may not have the perfect law, but we need it done now before we lose a lot more trees in the area. My understanding, and maybe based on what Doreen said, I'm wrong, but my understanding is the trees that were removed across the street were, yeah, that was perfectly legal for the developer to do at that point in time. And that's why we need this on the book stand. Thank you, Ms. Wolf. Uh, next up is Lynn. Yeah, uh, very quickly, Mr. Mayor. Uh, is there any uh, provision for uh, suspension of the um, permit and or um, uh, Jerry looking in case of a uh, storm? As yeah. says, in other words, if, if, you, if you have a large storm 
and you have 4,000 trees go down, uh, what, what, what would happen? Can you, uh, is there a suspension of getting a permit? Would you have to just have some kind of written affidavit that the trees were dead and removed? I don't think Jerry or staff would have the, the time to be looking at you know 500 properties with three, four trees down af after a uh, nor nor'easter. Yeah, I, I think the, the law provides provision for the village manager to have a, a emergency uh, powers to suspend it. Thank you. Thank you. Secret again. Stuart, are you on mute? I'm mute. Got it. Sorry. Um, to the point about 988 Orienta and the point of Doreen, that property owner could have been fined. The village has never, ever enforced its laws on the books. Um, it hasn't enforced, it used to have laws for trees on public property and enforce those. So, you know, we have laws on our books that are regularly ignored. Um, my fear is that's what's going to happen with this one. We have the ability to stop these actions. If he had been assessed on that property, which was quite lar large at 250 a square yard, I think that probably would have gotten out. Even if the fine had been levied and reduced, I think the message gets out. But without enforcement, it's just another um, leaf blower law. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, anybody in the board of trustees like to comment? Um, <clears throat> I think that there's some questions that have been asked uh, or raised. Uh, we also received uh, some written comments that I think need to be um, reviewed. So I would suggest that we keep the hearing open uh, and not close the hearing uh, and um, review, review the comments uh, and, make, and see if we need to do anything or not uh, regarding them. Uh, just before anybody else on the board goes, Gail, call for the hand up. I'm mute. I'm mute yourself, please, Ms. Kohler. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm so sorry. Just want to say thank you for all of you, to all of you, for the just unbelievable job. I'm just so proud to live in this community with what you've done with Hurricane Ida and COVID and just... Thank you to all of you. Um, so I'm, I, I, we're talking about nitty gritties of the law and there's an assumption that maybe everybody watching understands why it's so important to have trees. So I just wanna speak to that for a moment. Um, I, I'm also, I'm a 26 year resident of the village of Amaranek, mother of three, a nature educator. I'm co-chair of the village of Amaranek Tree Committee and I, have enjoyed for 26 years living on a street surrounded by mature oak trees. So um, yeah, flood mitigation. I just wanna share with people that one mature oak tree can remove between 50 to 200 gallons of water a day from the soil and transpire it into the air. So reverse that remove a mature oak and you've just added in a, on a very wet stormy day, 50 to 200 gallons of water that will stay on and in the ground. For every 5% of tree cover in a community, storm water mm -hmm. runoff is reduced by 2%. Trees prevent storm water runoff from reaching water courses with harmful chemicals that are collected from the roads and the sidewalks. Air quality. For every 10% increase in urban tree canopy, ozone is reduced three to 
That's by cutting down the trees, okay. Uh, you, you increase the ozone, you build tree canopy, tree coverage, you reduce ozone. Trees are proven to remove carbon from the air. Planting trees is one of the most cost-effective ways of drawing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. One single mature tree can absorb carbon dioxide and release enough oxygen into the atmosphere to support two humans. Those are numbers that need to be paid attention to. Research has also shown a 60% reduction in particulates from car exhaust fumes on streets that are lined with trees, whether they're public trees or private trees. Health and well being impacts. Trees have also been proven to have a positive impact on skin cancer, asthma, hypertension, and other stress related illnesses by filtering out polluted air, reducing smog formation providing shade from solar radiation and providing an attractive calming setting for recreation. And boy, have we needed that the last 18, 19 months. Sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides and particulates, carbon monoxide, cadmium, nickel, lead, they're all pollutants that trees work constantly to remove from the air. Trees also form an effective sound absorbing barrier to help reduce unwanted noise pollution. And the biodiversity of trees and providing natural habitats for birds, squirrels, and other fauna are considered to some people as incalculable. And speaking of cost savings, for every $1 spent on trees, a return of $2.70 in benefits is received, and that's according to the United States Forest Service. Independent studies have shown a consistent 5 to 15% increase in property values on tree-lined streets, proving that trees increase commercial and residential real estate values. Researchers have also discovered reductions in both violent and petty crime including domestic violence through the therapeutic calming influence of mature tree planting. Trees reduce temperatures by shade and transpiring water. This helps reduce air conditioning bills and energy use and heating bills. Studies have even proven that one mature tree can produce the same cooling effect as 10 room-sized air conditioners. This becomes an effective tool and reducing hot spots in our village. Trees can also save up to 10% of local energy consumption through their moderation of the local climate. Um, as far as wind speed goes, adverse wind speed, buildings increase wind speed as wind is forced to travel further around them. Trees significantly reduce wind speed up to a distance of 10 times their height. And we all know that few things can compare with the aesthetic impact and seasonal interest the trees offer. They provide huge visual appeal to any area and to any community. So trees are no longer viewed simply as something nice to look at. They're essential for the well-being of our, of our residents, of, of the residents of the village of Mamaroneck, of all residents and all communities and our community. And that is why we need a tree ordinance in the village of Mamaroneck. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Gil. Thank you for your immense uh, effort on this uh, much needed law. Yeah, I heard one trustee say that he wants to hold it over. Uh, I'd be willing to vote on this tonight. What, what does the rest of the board want to do? I, I would actually hold it over. I, I would hold it over. I know when we talked about scheduling it at the last meeting, I know you weren't there, Tom, but we, we did talk about having this um, maybe open for two meetings. So I would, I would be in favor of holding the hearing over one more time. Um, I also think, I think that the tree committee had prepared some information for backup that didn't get onto the agenda. So I think that might be beneficial to have it on for two weeks so that backup can be there. Okay. Or it didn't get into my packet, I, so. What's the date of the next meeting? The 13th or the 12th? I forget. The 12th. October the 12th. Okay. I make a motion to adjourn this public hearing until October the 12th, 2021. I'll second. Well, you know, call the roll. Trustees Winter? Yes. Patches? 
Yes. Lucas. Yes, and I just want to thank the tree committee for sticking for sticking with this um, and for waiting a year. They decided not to put it forward last summer. It's and it's been a long, a long hard road for them, and they've been steadfast, and I appreciate it. Trustee Tafor. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Uh, I and I want to thank the tree committee and echo what Nora said, and uh, hopefully uh, there will just be two more weeks. And then this long journey will be over. I, I also agree, and I thank the uh, tree committee for all their hard work. I am concerned about some of the legal issues that have been raised and questions uh, tonight, but also in, uh, that we've received in writing. And I'd like staff to, uh, particularly uh, uh, Bob, uh, to uh, review them and, may, and if there are issues that we should be aware of to advise us on the on what has been raised. Okay, Bob, you up with that? Yes, Mayor. We'll take a look at it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, gosh, let's go to the agenda at 10 o'clock. Uh, what are the bills? Uh, budget amendment for recreational overtime. Uh, this is transferring uh, within house, as it were, uh, $1,600 for parks and recs fees uh, to recreational overtime line in the budget. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions or concerns? Uh, come on, Glenn. Wait, wait, wait. You got a question, Glenn? Yeah, I'll make this quick. And this is just in general for overtime. Um, we have a, a lot of lot of uh, the uh, different ones are go are going um, with the overtime. Uh, could there before they get to the point where the budget goes over? Is it possible for them to let you know uh, and the reasoning why the overtime is is needs to be adjusted? That's all. It's all in the resolution, Glenn. The whole explanation of why it needed to be just. Yeah, but it should it should happen before they actually overspend, not after they overspend. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I need a motion. So moved. Second. Augie. Trustees Winter. Yes. Natchez. Yes. Lucas. Yes. The four. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Right. Uh, this is the same uh, kind of a deal. It's a recreational overtime. Uh, this has to do with softball and beach overtime. They're taking the money from the contract services and uh, applying it to the beach account and to the softball account. Uh, any questions or concerns? No. Any more? So moved. Second. We have a hand up, uh, oh, Tom. No? Jesus. All right. Dan. Come on, Glenn. It's, it's, it's 11 o'clock. Give me a break here. Dan had his hand up, Tom. I didn't I didn't have my hand up. Sorry. Your hand was up. Sorry. That's all right, big guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody have any questions or concerns? Dan did. No, Dan was pointing out Glenn. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> I'll make the motion. I think we already had a motion second, but I'll second if we didn't. Okay. Uh, well, we've got motion and second. Roll call. Roll call, please. Trustees, Wentra? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Okay. Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay. Next is the order of the bills. And the amount before us this evening. Is one million seventy-two thousand four hundred eleven dollars and eighty-five cents. Anybody have any questions or concerns? I do just have one question um, on page five, the Hudson Valley Engineering, uh, eighteen thousand seven hundred dollars. Uh, is that um, able to be uh, claimed in the FEMA uh, issues for reimbursement? No, um, not that. Yeah, this is the work they already did prior to. Oh, this is additional this is prior damage to, to talk to that. Yeah. Yes, prior to. That's on page six, actually. Yeah. Sorry about yeah. that. It's all right. Anybody have any other questions or concerns? 
Okay, I need a motion. So moved. Second. Augustino, please. Trustees, Wenshaw? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay, my friend. Excuse you. Uh, old business. Uh, resolution approving change order to order three to contract 2020-03 sanitary sewer rehabilitation. This has to do with the K-Crete. Uh, there was an amendment uh, that it was lowered by 10%. Jerry, you want to talk about that real quick? Mayor, what was discussed a couple of meetings ago was to bring back to the board if I could negotiate a lower price on the K-Crete for the point repairs, which are important. Um, uh, for us to uh, um, to execute in this project, and uh, the contractor agreed to a 10% reduction in the price that he provided. Uh, and so, um, I uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me. I hope you do because I didn't. Uh, the, the linear foot is now four hundred three dollars and forty six cents. Okay. Four hundred forty eight. The total cost of the project, instead of being sixty nine thousand four hundred eighty five. Is now sixty-two thousand five hundred thirty-six dollars and thirty cents. Right. So you, you not a seven thousand dollar reduction. And that's the change order. Uh, I think number three. Yes. I don't know why I don't have it in front of me. All right. Uh, with those changes and that amendment of the ten percent reduction, uh, I'd be willing to make the motion. There's a hand up. Mr. Tigert has his hand up. Oh, you got that. Yes. Yes, I have a question about how inspections are being done of this work. This is a fairly significant project. Is it true that there is an on-site engineer as well as on-site all the time? Yeah, we have. We have inspections or specters or some during this. That was part of the contract with Keller. And was it not, Jerry? Right. The contract with, as, as I understand the contract with Keller, it says it is specifically understood that Keller Sessions does not undertake or assume obligations of exhaustive on site inspection, supervision of construction, supervision of safety measures scheduling of work in compliance with any and all codes and laws. I'm sorry, Jerry, you, you got interrupted. By... Dan, did you ask a question? I didn't hear it, I'm sorry. I said, I, I, I believe in previous discussions, there, there, is, um, there is engineering supervision on this. Mm -hmm. a gentleman who works for Keller named Steve, and then our staff also augments that especially Mark and Mike Iannarelli. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there a new um, supervision contract, the management contract, or is it still the one um, that was originally signed? Mm -hmm. it, I, have, I have one that's signed um, January 22nd. Do you have any more comments upon this, Mr. Tier? Yeah, so the answer is yes, that there's an, an engineer on site during the work. The answer I heard. Okay, we're getting a deal then. Thank you. Okay, uh, I need a motion to accept this resolution. I'll make a motion. So, make a motion. so moved. Okay, I'll second. Oh, we call roll. Trustees, Wenshaw? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Right. Thank you, uh, staff, for working so hard on this important project that needs to be done post haste. Mm. Thanks for getting that little discount. That's nice. Yeah. Yes. 
every little bit helps, right? Yep. Point of the police chief, we did already. Next up is 4B, uh, Westchester Joint Waterworks project, uh, constructing a 30 million gallon a day filtration plant to comply with the EPS water surface treatment rules as a capital project. Uh, okay, the village share of this beginning cost uh, is $1,385,000. Any questions or concerns? Okay, I'll make the motion. I'll second. Orgy. Trustees, Winstrup. Yes. Hazard. Yes. Lucas. Yes. Support. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Uh, resolution accepting joint waterworks project shaft 22 chlorination system just in some of substance uh, the village uh, the village uh, New York City is lessening the chlorination uh, in, this, in its supply to us uh, but to make the trip from uh, Yonkers uh, to Mamaric the uh, the uh, level becomes too low so we have to add Venga, lo que te dije, no quiero tener problemas. what did you say okay Victor, you're not muted. You're not muted. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, who the heck was I? Okay. So the, the village is, uh, not the village, I'm sorry. Westchester Joint Warlords has to increase the chlorination uh, between Yonkers and to where we distribute to our customers. Uh, the village uh, cost of this $500,000 project is 138000 uh, I need to, I'll make the motion. I'll, I'll second. second. Augustino. Trustees, Weinstrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution accepting Westchester Joint Waterworks Project Wholesale Customer Meter Pressure Regulator uh, Vault Project at Anderson Hill Road. This is the connection between Westchester Joint Waterworks and uh, Suez. So that we don't lose pressure due to Suez taking uh, too much water, uh, which has happened during periods of high use. It's very important for fire protection on days of high volume. I'll make this motion. I'll second. Augustino. Trustees, Weintraub? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, item 4E is basically uh, the same story in a different location, uh, accepting Westchester Joint Waterworks Project A1374, Wholesale Customer Meter Pressure Regular Vault Protection at Osborne Road in connection, interconnection with Suez Water System. Uh, the village's cost to the village of our share of this joint project is $69,000. And I'll make that motion. Second. Augustino. Trustees, Weinstrup? Yes. Hatches? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, item 4F, accepting Westchester Joint Waterworks Project A1378, Weaver Street Pump Station, and PRV mod uh, modifications. Our share of this cost would be 138000 I'll make the motion. Second. Thank you, ladies. Uh, Augustino. Trustees, Weinstrup? Yes. Hatta? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution accepting Westchester Joint Water Works project, purchase water storage tank rehabilitation. Uh, the tanks are getting old. They need to be worked upon to uh, make sure they're working properly. The village cost of this problem of this process is four hundred and fifty-five thousand four hundred dollars. So moved. So seconded. Augustino. Trustees, one trip? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Okay. Aye. Uh, this is the same project, different tank at the same location. Uh, the cost to the village is four hundred and fifty-five thousand four hundred and Four hundred dollars. It, it, it is. It is not a duplicate. It's just two uh, tanks side by side, and that's the cost. So moved. Second. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate you ladies being on the ball here. 
Uh, uh, Boogie Corral. Trustees Wenshaw? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Hey, Murphy? Aye. Bench donation. Uh, this is a donation of one of those swing benches in Harbor Island Park, uh, which were uh, kind of in the process of being replaced. Uh, Ms. Denise Winchester is desirous of donating a swim bench and plaque to the village of Mimaric to be placed in Harbor Island Park in loving memory of Joe Cristofalo, devoted husband, father, and grandfather. And the quoted cost of this is $2,450 for the swing bench as a donation, was to be accepted by us in this resolution. Uh, I, I want to thank Mrs. Winchester uh, for remembering a loved one uh, by giving us all uh, an area to enjoy. And I'll gladly make this motion. Second. 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 Okay, Ogie. Trustees Wesher? With thanks, yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The floor? Yes, and thank you. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay. We have a lot to get through in these resolutions, and then we have a lot of stuff added on. So bear with me, please. Okay. Resolution A, these are bond resolutions just for the public. These are projects that the village has already done and completed and paid for, and we are now going to bond them because they're capital projects. And uh, this is the process where we do it. In total, uh, these capital projects, uh, what is it, six million, six million and change? Six million four hundred thirty-seven thousand six hundred and four dollars Thank you, thank you very much. So we're gonna go through them one at a time because that's the way it has to be done, apparently. Extracts from the village meeting. Uh, at a regular board of trust meeting of the village of Manic located in Westchester County, it was held in New York today, uh, quorum, the following bond resolution. Alexa, turn off my light. Okay, this, this first resolution A, uh, we, we went through them in the work session. It's $241,137 for motor vehicles. Somebody want to make a motion, please? So moved. A second. Will you please call a roll? Trustees Wencher? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Yes. Hi. Uh, the next item up, item B, is $193,815 uh, for software bonded for 10 years. I'll make the motion. A second. Mr. Posco. Trustees, Weinstra? Yes. Natchez? No. Regions discussed in uh, that I voiced in the work session. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, extracts of meeting for the Board of Trustees. This is for street improvements, DPW equipment, uh, $493,797. It's a 15 year bond. I'll make the motion. A second. Well, Trustees Weintraub? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, the next up is a bond resolution for dock improvements. It's a 20 year bond, $217,286. So okay. moved. Okay. All second. Will you please? Trustees Weintraub? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Support? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, the next up is building improvements, $438,314. Most of that is uh, Stanley Avenue uh, Community Counseling Center. So moved. I'll second. Okay. 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 please. Trustees, Weinstrom? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Support? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, up is a 40 year bond uh, for water and sanitary sewer uh, system improvements. It's potable water and sanitary system improvements. $4,853,255. I'll make the motion. Second. Mr. Fusco. Trustees, Wencher? Yes. 
Magic? No, for reasons I discussed in the work session. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Clears up that crew. What we have here. Next up is resolution authorizing close out of, and funding for capital projects. Okay, uh, whereas on a periodic basis, it is appropriate to review capital projects that have been authorized by the Board of Trustees, and whereas based upon a review conducted by the Clerk Treasurer, uh, department staff, the following projects are completed and it is necessary to authorize funding for the closeout. Uh, the projects in the first one are Parks Department Storage Shed, 42,000, West District Joint Waterworks, Park Lane Booster Station, 47,563,000. ,000. I guess this is supposed to be swing set and so at Columbus Park, 36 cents. That's the balance of the That's project. The balance. <laughs> of my sink set <laughs> installation. <laughs> now, be, now be it resolved that the Village of Marinac Board of Trustees hearing authorizes to close out these projects and be it further resolved at such course be funded as followed. Uh, 42500 from the general fund, $47,563.23. From the water fund. Uh, okay, I'll make that motion. A second. Morgan, please. Trustees Wenstrom? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The floor? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Hi. Next time, just ask me for the 33, 36 cents if I'm walking through the hall. Uh, authorization uh, resolution accepting donations to the Marine Education. Center Touch Tank at Harbor Island Park. Uh, the Johnson family of Larchmont uh, is donating $380 to the Touch Tank in the park, which is very generous, and we really appreciate that uh, from one of our neighbors in Larchmont. I'll make a motion uh, to accept that donation and thank the Johnson family. I'll second with thanks. Okay, Trustees, Wencha? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes, thank you. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Uh, resolution awarded contract uh, 2021 03 tree and dead branch removal. Uh, this is a contract. Uh, this is a pretty much a contract we have every year, isn't it, Jerry? Uh, it's close to it. Yeah. We did um, some minor uh, changes, but uh, we're very we're very pleased to see that the pricing came in very competitively. This evergreen outburst, uh, which is here in the village. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. moved. Okay, I'll so, I'll so second. Will you please, buddy? Trustees Westrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution authorizing uh, to execute an extension agreement with Passport for Parking Citation Management Services. Jerry, just what a brief. Uh, I'll let Dan do that. He's uh, he lives and breeds parking. Okay. <laughs> Dan. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is just a renewal of our agreement with uh, now it's Passport it used to be Complex for Parking Citation Management Services. They provide us with the handheld ticket writers. They uh, do the reporting to the New York State DMV of scoff laws. They follow up with notices for the unpaid parking tickets. Uh, and we actually were able to negotiate a slightly lower rate for this year as opposed to the uh, previous contract. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dan. Anybody want to make it? So moved. A second. Policino. Trustees Weinstrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, item 40, Municity. Uh, Dan, you want to give us a brief outline of this one? Sure. This is the uh, billing department and uh, land use software that uh, uh, we've recommended to move forward with. Uh, uh, several questions were raised regarding experience with other, other communities. We've Checks references, 
uh, we've also determined that uh, the application the application offerings as noted, identified in the uh, uh, proposal uh, meet the village's need and we uh, very much look forward to uh, pending the board's approval moving forward with the implementation of this uh, product which will help with uh, both the enforcement the uh, uh, the building permit application process as well as make it easier for residents to perform uh, e-services online thank you dan uh, i'll make that motion I'll second. Happy to be getting this done for you guys finally. Good luck with it. Thank you. Hard out of cell was such a dud. Yeah. Okay, please. Trustees Weintraub? Yes. Hatches? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Next up is item 4P. And just as a reminder, we have a lot of work to do after these items by adding a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, Gary, you want to talk about, I know we talked about this rather extensively, uh, especially during the budget season, about uh, funding these positions. You want to give us a little primer? Sure. So, so, so um, Mayor and Board, um, as, you, as you know, obviously, we've deferred quite a bit of uh, normal, regular maintenance that the Parks Department and the um, DPW um, um, divisions or, or departments have done uh, to, to have the all hands on deck. Um, approach uh, for the um, for the cleanup after after um, tropical storm uh, Ida Hurricane Ida just Ida and um, the reality is that um, we're falling behind on some things and so because our sales tax have come in higher than expected I was asking the board for consideration and we talked about this several meetings ago um, asking for the consideration for um, these frozen positions to be released two months in advance. Um, now we need them more than ever uh, to be able to fill these very quickly and to get the two departments uh, some, some much needed help. Uh, as you know, um, um, I'm involved in the departments now um, and I have, um, I have promoted two individuals to help out um, with that. I've advanced them. Um, and so uh, things are going well, but in fact, this weekend, what I did was um, walk um, throughout the neighborhood and uh, uh, Mr. Ferrara will attest to it. He was getting texts and emails from me all, all morning on Sunday uh, of some of the items and issues that we've deferred uh, because of the cleanup from the storm, uh, which, uh, which he needs help to, to, to do. So we're asking for uh, um, an advancement or a budget amendment of $65,125 so that we can get these individuals um, uh, back to us filled um, two months in advance of what we normally uh, had talked about many, many months ago during the COVID uh, budget and season. These are not new positions. They're just positions that were empty. We're not creating Correct. a whole bunch of new positions. We just, we just held them. That's right, Nora. We held them empty, uh, but we really need them now. So I was hoping for the board's consideration to do it two months in advance especially since the sales tax uh, revenue um, came in much higher than, than expected. And of course, uh, you know, no one anticipated the storm, but the reality is deferred um, daily maintenance obligations that we have are significant now that we need to catch up on. Okay. Do you have any questions or concerns? Uh, I would be pleased to make that motion and thank uh, our staff once again for the Herculean effort they have uh, exhibited here in the Village of America. And always with a smile. Mm. I'll, I'll uh. second that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second the smile comment and the motion. <laughs> okay. uh, all right. Augustino. Trustees Wentra? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The floor? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Right. Um, all right, we have a bunch of stuff to add. So well, that was just P, right? So yes. this is Q. Uh, well, I, I need item Q is to add an item to the agenda. So okay. moved. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay, Q, R. Item R is to appoint uh, to the zoning board uh, what's Mr. Gladstein's uh, first Brian. name? 
Brian. Brian. To, point, to appoint Brian Gladstein to the Zoning Board of Appeals in the Village of Mamera. So moved. so moved. Second. Oh, sorry. Second. Call the roll. Trustees Wenstrom? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, next up is uh, add an item to the agenda. Well, you so did the alphabet for me, right? So moved. Yes. So moved. Yes. Second. Okay. Yes. Okay, call roll. Trustees Wenstrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, I make a motion to report. Uh, what's Miss Tobia's first name? Cammy. Okay, let's say it again. I think it's Cammy, C A M I E. Okay, I make a motion to appoint Cammy Tobia. Tobias. Bias. Bias. I'm sorry. There it is. I wrote it down uh, to a position on the Harbor Coastal Zone Management Commission. Second. All in favor. No, call roll. I'm sorry. Trustees Weinstrup? Yes. Hatches? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay. Uh, I need a motion to add an item to the agenda. It's all moved. Item for you. Or oh, oh, you'll do that. Oh, okay. So moved. Item for you. I'll second. Everybody in favor of moving an item to the agenda? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay, this item is to appoint uh, to the Harbor Coastal Zone Management Commis Commission, Mr. Jack Lusk. Second. I'll make that. I'll, oh, make I'll, I'll, I'll make the motion. All right. I'll second. Mr. Fusco. Trustees, Wenshaw? Yes. Hatcher? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, the next up is to add an item to the agenda. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Uh, the next is to add um, Mr. What, what's Mr. Williams' first name? Brian. Mr. Brian Williams to the Traffic Commission? Yes. Yep. I'll make that motion. Second. Mr. Fusco. Okay, I got it. Is a call? Trustees, Wenshaw? Yes. Hatches? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, next up is the add an item to the agenda. I'll make a motion to add the, an item to the agenda. Can I have a second? A second. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, I'm going to make a motion to appoint Mr. Andrew Spatz to the uh, Flood Mitigation Advisory Committee in the Village of Mamaroneck. Okay. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. Second. Roll. Trustees, Wenstrom? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, so what? I need a motion to add an item to the agenda. So moved. I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm going to do this all in one fell swoop, all these appointments. Uh, what's the name of the committee? Help me out. Throw me a bone. I know what you I know what it is. It's, it's not. Jerry, what's the name of the committee? The committee is the. Um, Clean energy. Climate smart. Climate smart. Okay. Climate smart committee. Uh, this is a Sorry about that. As members of the Climate Smart Committee, Ellen Silver, David Freeman, uh, Debbie Sullivan, Tim Whitney, Liam Rob O'Hagan, uh, Daniel Kushnick, Jerry Barbario, Tom Murphy. And Dennis Drugan. Uh, make Climate that. smart. All right, I'm not going to make the motion. I'll make the motion. Someone second, please. I'll okay. second. Thank you. All you call a roll. Trustees, Wenshaw? Yes. 
Matches? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Uh, I'm going to abstain because my name is on the appointments. Good golly. Uh, that gives us the second uh, communication to the board. Okay. In an act of. Tom, Tom, Tom <clears throat> um, Jerry has extended the um, pickup of debris through the, uh, through the end of the month, which would be Thursday. Um, you know, and uh, there seems to be a lot more going on uh, that's not abusing it. Uh, we might want to think about. Or I'd appreciate him thinking about maybe ex we need to extend it a little bit further. Um, I, I just don't know. I don't know what's coming down. I, I just see more and more, you know, debris piles, uh, you know, from the flood damaged uh, areas. Okay. Um, we're keeping up with it um, rather quickly. So um, I'll make that assessment on Thursday morning okay. when I drive around. Thanks, Chair. Glenn, you have your hand up. Please be brief. A couple of things quick. Um, uh, Stanley Avenue, the uh, community center got nailed again by the storm. We're aware. What's that? We're aware. We're aware of it. Yeah. Is there any way to move that building? I mean, literally take that building and move it to a different section yeah. of the village at this point because of how many times that it's been flooded? Um, we may have a problem because it's, um, yeah, they, uh, the building's historic. So I, I know what Jerry's going to say and I can yeah. answer, I can I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it, I can but, answer this, but I can answer this question and I can give you an answer you'll like. It's, um, it's, you can raise, you can elevate a building. That's, okay. That's yeah. I would, I would definitely elevate that building because yeah. the amount of money that we, we spent. In fact, that. that is something Connecticut did a tremendous amount of after Hurricane Sandy. Um, you can it, it's absolutely okay to elevate the building. Uh, second, we were we uh, had on the agenda previously. I saw it taken off, not bound again. That we have problems with uh, leaks in the roof with the police department, court, and such. Uh, are we doing anything with that right now? Nope, not right now. And the last one is, um, yeah, I, I, I saw that the sales tax is coming in um, very high. Um, I think you should add a million dollars to what you're looking at on income with the sales tax. Uh, we had already added 400,000 to the budget previously to today. We added another 200,000 today. And then you could reduce the um, Harbor Island parking by 90 the beach revenue by 50 and the pavilion by 80 and that would kind of balance off and then i would look at the budget in november and see exactly where you are thank you have a good night you guys are muted report from the village manager um <laughs> the only report i have is that um leaf blower season starts on friday <laughs> Other than that, that's all I have. I mean, <laughs> obviously, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm running on fumes every day, and that's just that's all I have for you right now. So I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Jerry, don't be sorry. You you you've, you've done an exemplary job, and uh, it was a, a privilege to watch you. Thank you, uh, Clerk Treasurer. Nothing to report, man. Village Attorney. Nothing for me, Mayor. Minutes of boards, commissions, and committees. Minutes of the Board of Trustees work session, regular session for September 13th. And the minutes of the Art Council meeting for July 19th, 2021. Uh, that this brings us to the end of a very long meeting. Uh, thank you all for your, your patience and your indulgence. Uh, for those who have been asking about ways to help the community uh, get the help with flooding we need, there'll be information coming out soon. Uh, so stay tuned. Thank you to everyone in this community for the amazing volunteer effort that went on. Uh, you literally saved lives and you gave out hope. And uh, what else can you ask for? Well, and it's, and it's still going on. It's still going on. People are, you know. For a while. Yeah, so it's. Okay. I need a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Second.
Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night. Good evening.